Hello, hello. Welcome everyone to the education chat as well as the education nation. Uh, my name is Jay Wong over here. Uh, thanks of all of you for joining in for the session today. So today we are going to have a very, very interesting and a very special session. All right. So I hope that you are ex excited as I am. Uh, so a little bit introduction about Education Summit, right? So it's basically an initiative that was created by uh, Trophy Education. So what happens was that uh, during the COVID situation in uh, March, right? So a lot of teachers uh, has been, uh, 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 interestingly enough, having some challenges in bringing in education uh, towards the online. And what happens was that we actually created this uh, uh, initiative called uh, uh, Education Summit. So uh, let me just bring out the picture over here. So this was an, uh, a summit that really brings in uh, professional educators and experienced educators to share with teachers out there uh, on uh, effective education methods, ideas, solutions, and strategies, right? Uh, in hopes that teachers will be able to use all of this uh, information to enhance their learning in school, right? So as it goes on uh, towards that, uh, what I was seeing is that there was close to about 4,000 over people and teachers and educators that actually joined in into this education summit. So long behold, uh, the 4,000 teachers actually came surprisingly from uh, various different countries. I see that there's about 40 different countries that actually participated in this program. And uh, what happens was that in amongst all of those 4,000 uh, participants, there were a few that actually um, stand out uh, during the education summit. And hence, uh, with regards to this um, during the education summit, I thought that, hey, why don't we actually uh, invite all of this participation, uh, which are teachers, on board on the education summit so that uh, we could actually have a dialogue and chat between teachers of different countries, different nations, because uh, all of us has been aware that uh, education is a very colorful world, right? Uh, there's different varieties, there are uh, very different experiences that is happening all across different nations. And uh, to us is that, hey, uh, how is education like in a country uh, in the uh, US, for example? How is education like in countries in the uh, Philippines, in, in Indonesia? And uh, that's what we are about to discover, uh, whereby in COVID, I guess a lot of us are stuck at home. We can travel around the world. And uh, I guess this is one of the redemption on what we can do is that we can travel digitally to different countries, right, to seek um, and to meet up with different people uh, via online, right? And uh, I guess this is one of the main reason on why we are creating this uh, special session for today, whereby we will be having three very interesting teachers, uh, educators uh, to be on board to speak with us on education, all right? So long story short, let me just um, bring out uh, some of the speakers. So we will be having teachers from three different countries. So country number one, of course, is coming from Malaysia, right? Country number two, uh, there will be teachers coming from Indonesia. And uh, finally, there will be teachers coming from uh, the Philippines. So those of you who are watching right now, okay, uh, first of all, I just want to welcome all of you. Thank you for joining us. So uh, would you be able to comment down there on which country of origin that you're from or which country that you're tuning this education summit from? Just comment down below so that I can see and read out uh, which uh, country that you are from, okay? So I can see over here. Wow, hello, Marisa Andarza, watching here from Chabatuan Central Elementary School. Wow, okay, from Ilo Ilo. Wow, okay. Uh, teachers from Philippines. Okay, are there any other countries that is joining in? So please comment down below on which country that you're tuning from so that we can know uh, how many of you are actually watching from different countries and different regions. Okay, so, uh, and uh, of course, uh, for teachers out there who are um, in this Facebook group over here, right? Uh, please remember that this Facebook group is actually filled with a lot of gold nuggets, right? If you were to go into the unit section, the unit session, you may be able to find a lot of different materials. So as of now, we have over 40 different speakers that are present in this education summit, pre-recorded, discussing on various different topics on education, including uh, pre preschool education, including mental well-being education, uh, including uh, the uh, how to combat uh, uh, depression uh, amongst teachers and students, all the way towards a gamification on education, uh, education with low bandwidth. What can you do if you don't have internet and you want to teach online, right? So all of these topics are all within this education summit 
group whereby you can have instant access towards it and hopefully you are able to benefit out from it. Wow, I see that there's a lot of teachers. Wow, coming from Wihan Doyo from Indonesia. Hello. Nice for tuning in from Indonesia. And then people from Indonesia, from Philippines. Wow, there's a lot of Jabatuan uh, Central Elementary School. And uh, I guess I, I know the reason why, uh, because there's one very special speaker that will be on board together with us, which we'll be inviting him up on stage shortly in a while. Okay, good afternoon um, from uh, Kalinok, District, Philippines. So, Magandong Hapon, right? Is that how you say? Good afternoon. All right, Magandong Hapon, right? Okay, so without further ado, I would like to bring up the main uh, characters that will be on together with us on this education uh, nation, right? Uh, so first of all, the teacher, the first teacher then I, I'm about to bring up uh, will be, so some say that this teacher might be voted as the most stylish teacher ever, right? She has the best fashion sense, right? Uh, according to Education Summit, right? So uh, she travels, uh, she's based in uh, Philippines, but however, she's currently now based in Indonesia. So uh, her name is none other than teacher Tina Krisha Alcantara. So teacher Tina, I would like to invite teacher Tina up on stage. Hello, teacher Tina. How are you doing today? Hi, OMG. I didn't know those adjectives, Jay. Right. <laughs> so so how, did, how does it feel to be crowned the most fashionable teacher award? I didn't know about it. How, how did you know about it? Yeah. <laughs> right. so, uh, yeah, so you have been just a crowned as the most stylish teacher again, once again. <laughs> OMG. Thank <laughs> you. Right. I'll take it as a compliment, Jay. All right. So, so Tina, uh, where, where are you currently uh, um, hosting uh, from? Are, are you currently in Jakarta? Yes. Um, so at present, I am teaching in one of the schools here in Jakarta. It's Western School. But actually, uh, I've been teaching here for almost eight months already since January. And then um, actually, I'm a Filipina. So when I was in the Philippines, I was also a teacher. I've, I had been teaching in both in public and private schools in the Philippines. And then... Okay. Uh, landed a new job here in Indonesia. Wow. Okay. So thanks for being together with us over here, Teacher Tina. So uh, I guess we're about to have a lot of discussion about education and fashion sense as well shortly in a while. Okay. So. <laughs> Thank you, Jay. <laughs> yeah. So next up, okay, the next teacher that I'm about to bring up over here. Okay. Uh, some say that uh, she has one of the best uh, cooking skills in uh, Edu Summit, right? And that uh, if she cooks a nasi goreng, uh, Gordon Ramsay will cry and ask for more, right? Some say that her favorite song is called It's a Small World After All. <laughs> and she's a teacher coming from Jakarta as well. So uh, let's bring it up for teacher Joyce Magdalena Kusuma. Hi, teacher Joyce. Welcome on board. Hi. Hello world, it's a small world. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> right. Hi, teacher yeah. Joyce. So um, uh, tell us about uh, where you're coming from and which school are you currently from? Uh, my school, uh, I teach in the same school with Miss Tina in a Western school and based in Jakarta, Indonesia. Uh, and uh, I teaching in kindergarten, kindergarten section. So I deal with a lot of cute face every day, but now only from screen. Yeah, uh, and then uh, I'm teaching special needs school too. I used right. to, yes. Okay, that's me. Right. And, and I guess what I see from uh, teacher Joyce is that she has a lot of uh, passion and, uh, and love as a teacher, <laughs> right? As uh, you're currently dealing with, uh, uh, you have dealt with a lot of students and worked with students that are uh, special needs uh, catered, right? Special so, uh, needs, yes. I, first of all, I just want to salute you for the work as a special needs educator. Uh, there's a lot of uh, work and, and, and what do you call that effort that mm -hmm. has to be put in when you are working with a special needs educator. So, thank you so much once again, Joyce, uh, for joining in on today's education platform. All right? Yes, thank you. Okay, so we'll speak more about the nasi goreng later. Probably we can share with all the audience out there how to cook the <laughs> nasi goreng petai. Okay, right. just put the 
put the order there. <laughs> All right. So, right. So, if you want the instant delivery of nasi goreng or fried rice, <laughs> right, please do comment down there for nasi goreng order from uh, Teacher Joyce. Uh, don't start it. <laughs> don't start it. <laughs> it cannot okay. be delivered across the country, you know. Right. <laughs> Okay, so next up, uh, okay, uh, so we have a representative from Indonesia. So right now, let's travel across, uh, uh, not far away, uh, slightly above. Uh, on top of that, so there will be a nation from uh, Malaysia. So the teacher that I'll be introducing over here, uh, she's uh, based in Kuching, uh, Malaysia, Kuching, Sarawak from Malaysia. And uh, actually, some say that if you went to a class and you catch a glimpse of her dimple, right, uh, you might actually score A in your next examination, <laughs> right? And some say that she has a lucky dimple, right? <laughs> that, uh, you went to a class, uh, if you if you see, you lay your eyes on the lucky dimple, uh, you might have uh, good luck for the next one year, okay? So without further ado, I would like to bring up uh, teacher Lucy Ho from Kuching, Sarawak, Malaysia. Hello, teacher Lucy. Hi, Jay. You're so <laughs> hilarious. What's a dimple? <laughs> Right, why don't you show everyone and give everyone good luck for one year? Yes, let's have a wonderful session this afternoon. <laughs> and uh, Teacher Lucy, thank you so much uh, for coming on board on the Adunation. Uh, so tell us uh, a bit more about uh, where you're coming from, which school are you from as well? Ah, yeah, um, I'm from Kuching, and I'm currently serving at SMK Batu Lintang. It is my second school. Later, I'll talk more, I'll show you pictures about my school. All right. So uh, as well as uh, those of you who know teacher Lucy, uh, please comment down there. Lucy Dimple, Lucy Dimple. Okay. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of fans out there. Okay. So thanks, thank you once again, Lucy, for joining on to this EduNation. As well as, wow. Okay. So uh, for our final teacher for the day, uh, so I would like to bring upon. So this teacher over here, right, she, um, or it's not a he, it's a he. Okay. And uh, he's actually based in uh, Philippines. So we have a representative from the schools from Philippines. And some say that uh, this teacher over here, okay, maybe if I start off with, uh, for the first time when I actually lay my eyes on his profile picture uh, on Facebook, right? There's something that really caught my eye is that that million dollar smile of a uh, <laughs> very arranged white teeth actually pierced to the screen to me. And it's very hard not to get attention of his smile. Okay? So some say that this teacher has this, the, that million dollar smile. Or if you convert into a peso, it's a 48.8 million growth <laughs> mark. Okay? He's none other than the education prince of Elo Elo. <laughs> teacher Ian Brunia Oranio. Hello, teacher Ian. Yay! Oh, hello, James. Hello, everyone. All right. So, teacher Ian, uh, I, I guess you have a lot of fans because uh, since yesterday, I have like close to 100 over teachers that are... Uh, came from uh, the, the city of Ilo Ilo. So uh, you can do a shout out to all of the teachers out there? Yeah, definitely. So uh, good afternoon, everyone. So especially to uh, the teachers watching from the Philippines, specifically to our supporters in Ilo Ilo and from the school district of Kabatuan 1, specifically the Kabatuan Central Elementary School. So good afternoon and uh, let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So those, those of you who are a fan of teacher Ian, please comment Ian down there. Ian, 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 so that we know that uh, you are one of the teacher Ian's fan. Because uh, I see that a lot of uh, teachers are calling you Sir Ian, Sir Ian. So the, the question is that, are you really, have you been knighted as a sir? So yeah, why, why is everyone calling you Sir Ian? Uh, because here in the Philippines, when you are a male teacher, usually um, you're being addressed as sir. So that's right. why they're calling me Sir Ian or Sir Ian. So I guess that's that is so. Okay. All right. So yeah. So okay. I guess uh, I hope everyone is uh, ready as of the moment because right now uh, I guess education when when we actually started about this uh, idea is that. I guess one week ago or probably a few days ago, I actually contacted you guys and asked if, uh, if, if you want to represent your various own countries to come on board and to share about education from uh, your respective nation. Uh, and I guess it's a very important um, to have a discussion between teachers, right? Uh, coming from the, the on-ground teachers that are serving the nation and the children, right? So probably uh, to allow more teachers to have a different perspective on education and what it's like uh, to be in the classroom 
uh, of uh, the city of Ilo Ilo uh, from Kuching as well as from Jakarta as well. All right. So uh, probably let, let's start off with uh, teacher uh, Tina, right? Uh, teacher Tina and Krishna. Probably you can share with us a little bit more about uh, 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 the city of Jakarta and as well as the school that you're coming from, which is called uh, Western School. So uh, yeah, take it away, teacher Tina. Oh, um, that would be great, Che, uh, for a moment. Can I show my slides sure. on yes. about the school, Che? Okay. Uh, hold on. Right. So, and for those who are tuning in, please do comment down below as well uh, which country you are from so that we know uh, that which country you are from. Or if you have any questions for any of our teachers over here, uh, please comment down below as well so we can have a much more conversation between teachers as well as with, with you as well uh, that you're tuning in from whichever countries that you're currently from. All right. So, uh, Tina, are you ready to go? Yeah, I think I am ready. So, this is the school where I am. As of the moment, it's a Western school located in North Jakarta. So you can visit our website at www.western-school.schch.it. And then um, before the COVID, actually, we were doing lots of things. And most of the things that we offer to children are um, we were exposing them to different uh methods of teaching wherein these kids are exposed outside so we just don't limit the lesson inside the four walls of the classroom so what we were doing was of course um, to showcase our kids talents so before the covid we just actually had mall shows wherein these mall shows catered students um, talents in music in drama and everything and of course uh, on the picture on the left that was what i think one of the activities where we had also a dramatization so most of actually of our activities in my subject are actually um not limited only in four walls of the classroom so we usually go out because i'm teaching by the way i'm teaching english conversation in the school okay all right and, uh... and and um okay so maybe i can share this one later jay the different platforms where i use to reach out my students before the covid okay so uh yeah so so that's a very interesting i guess tina you are uh, from the same school as uh, teacher joyce as well yes jay okay so uh, I, I guess next up uh, it's uh, teacher joyce uh, would you be able to tell us more about uh, the school that you're coming from as well as uh, what current what subject are you currently teaching uh should i show my slide too or not sure or, uh, it's, it's up yes. to you uh, okay okay yeah Okay. All right. So uh, yes. So uh, I'm from the same school with Miss Tina. Here I am. This is me. Okay. So I'm in a uh, kindergarten teacher in Western School. So my hobby is dancing and singing plus performing art, and I use it a lot in the classroom to get uh, to asking the student to start the lesson or for break the eyes or to teach them how to more expressive in the classroom and then uh, this is my later this is oh sorry this is this is our school western school so western school is uh, founded in 2003 uh, and it start only from from garage, from garage, and only for uh, only have four students in the beginning. But now we already have five buildings. This is our school, J. Western School in North Jakarta, and then uh, the students we have now is one thousand three hundred students, 
from kindergarten until senior high school. Right. Okay. Okay. So that's about Western school, I right. think. And I guess uh, what what subjects are you currently teaching over at Western school? In Western school, if kindergarten, we teach all day. So we teach from the science, mathematics, uh, English, uh, everything, all the subject. So it's not a subject teacher, but it's overall for all class. All right. And, yes. um, and we, do you teach a culinary cooking skill as well? <laughs> no. Okay. So, all right. It's a, it's a personal... Uh, uh, <laughs> not like a personal thing. Okay, sure. Uh, thank you so much, Teacher Joyce. And uh, next up, uh, let, let's uh, have a look over at uh, uh, Teacher Lucy as well. So, Teacher Lucy, a little bit more about uh, your uh, school as well as uh, uh, Kuching, the town of Kuching as well. All right. Um, Jay, allow me to share my screen. Sure. Okay, I can see that, uh, Teacher Lucy, you have a very uh, wide, <laughs> wide range of fans yeah. as well that are tuning in. So, um, currently, I'm studying at my second school, which is uh, Bataling Tan Secondary School, and that is where my hometown is. It's at Kuching, Sarawak, Malaysia. So, I see that today we have a lot of guests from Philippines as well as Indonesia. Actually, I think like if you look at the map, my place is right between Indonesia and Philippines, okay? So, the, the top right there in the heart of the Borneo, that is where I was first posted to. It was uh, SMK Kapi, it's actually quite a rural area. And the second posting is at uh, SMK Batu and that is more of an uh, urban area. So, if you can see this, oh, I miss this place so much. Oh, on the left side is where uh, we have to take um, flight from Cushing, like 45 minutes flight to Cebu. And after the flights, we actually took uh, a three hours boat ride. I still remember, either we take the 515 boat or we took there are a few boats. Left. Yeah, so I actually enjoyed the surrounding. If you look at the scenic view there, our school, SMK Carpet, is uh, located right in the, the jungle kind of thing, a lot of greeneries. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, so these are some of the things I did. Um, with the uh, with the community there as well as invited a lot of guests. I think I have this passion because I have a mentor who is very passionate about inviting speakers. So we also invited our ministers or our officers from departments, uh, presidents and teachers union, principals, all the way to come in to Kapit to give talks and awareness to our students. Okay, um, the question is about my school, eh? so I will jump. And then this is my beloved hometown. Uh, the picture credited to my colleague, uh, Chegu Hasno. Yeah, this is uh, Kuching. And then on the right is my current school, SMK Batu Lintang. Yeah, so that is a little bit about my school. Back to you, Jay. All right, so uh, teacher Lucy from uh, from uh, Kuching and uh, SMK uh, Lintang, Batu Lintang, right? So uh, currently, what subject are you currently teaching over at the school? I'm currently teaching English, like uh, from 4 to 5, the 16 years old and the 17 years old. All right. So, so we are using the EFR for the form 4 this year. All right. So, uh, yeah, a, a little bit about teacher Lucy as well. I see that uh, she's a very passionate teacher. I guess towards the entire MCO, she has been um, equipping herself with a lot of different knowledge on education. I see that she joins the Toastmaster. Uh, we, we'll, we'll go in a little bit more on that as well uh, later on yeah. in the discussion. Uh, so, uh, but uh, thank you again for, for joining on a representative uh, from uh, uh, Sarawak as well. Pleasure. And, uh, Thanks, Jay. And, right. And I guess uh, last but not least, we have a uh, teacher, Ian Oranio. So let's uh, have a look at uh, the school from uh, Ilo Ilo. Uh, yeah, teacher Ian. Okay. So can I share my screen now? Yes. Am I screen sharing now, Jay? Yeah, there you go. Okay. Okay. So, so once again, good afternoon, and uh, I'm Teacher Ayan from uh, Kapatman Central Elementary School, which is located in Iloilo, Philippines. So here's the map of the Philippines. So as you can see here, we are located here at the uh, Western Visayas, specifically 
in Panay Island. And um, let's zoom in. So here's Iloilo and here's Kabatuan. And in Kabatuan, our school is located at the town proper. So let's take a look at uh, our school. So this is an aerial view of Kabatuan Central Elementary School and another angle. So there you go. And these are our some of our school buildings, as you can see here. And um, for the COVID-19, so um, this is how some of uh, my classes in Kabatuan Central Elementary School goes on. So uh, at the um, upper left, so those are the primary six learners in mathematics. At the uh, upper right hand, so those are the third grade learners who are um, engaging in their um, lesson on uh, odd and even, even numbers. At the bottom right, so um, those are the third grade learners too. And uh, on the um, bottom left, so this is my third grade uh, class. So in this uh, um, classroom, so we don't have any projector or any TV available. So I just uh, maximize the use of technology. I just uh, put my laptop at the top of uh, the chair at the top of the table so that everybody can see. And also at Kabatuan Central Elementary School, so I am the uh, school mathematics coordinator. And as part of the celebration of the International Day of Mathematics, so um, we, um, we have different activities such as Sudoku competition, which is uh, open to all learners who are um, willing to join. Also, we have essay writing competition, which are open for uh, primary four to six learners. Also, here we have basic facts competition, um, wherein uh, everybody is uh, enjoyed in the competition. Also, we have Rubik's Cube, com co Rubik's Cube competition, as well as poster making contest. Um, we, we also had Math Zumba, wherein um, the dance moves are all in um, mathematics uh, symbols. and. Um, prior to that, we had our opening program wherein our school's district supervisor, as you can see here at the uh, bottom right, is uh, giving um, his words to our learners. So after that, we also invited uh, some teachers to talk on uh, mathematics shortcuts as well as some updates on mathematics education. And um, the picture at the upper right hand corner is a 10 gram making wherein um, the learners that are involved in are learners from kindergarten as well as our learners in the special education department specifically those children with special educational needs so as you can see even though in mathematics activities we try to uh, involve everybody because we believe that uh, um we should not um let uh, anyone being deprived of the experience how beautiful mathematics education is. So I think um, for now, that's it, Jay. Okay, so that was uh, teacher Ian. You know, Ian, when you're presenting, I see that there's a lot of comments uh, and, and there's almost like a lot of teachers coming from Ilo Ilo. So are you like <laughs> a, a celebrity teacher over there that uh, so many of them are actually following you today? Oh, I think it's, no. All right. Or, or is it because just because of the million dollar smile? So you managed to get a lot of uh, teacher fans as well. <laughs> Maybe. All right. So, okay. So, so there we go. So that was round one. And as we uh, get in deeper into where uh, teachers uh, that are present today are actually from. So we have teachers coming from Jakarta, from uh, Kuching, as well as from Ilo Ilo as well. So let's let's go on to the uh, the first round over here, which uh, we have a couple of questions for teachers over here with regards to uh, education, right? So what's going to happen right now is this, uh, that uh, we're going to time every teacher for two minutes, right? So um, for those of you who are just watching right now is that uh, we actually had the education summit, right? And there was a uh, uh, speaker uh, by the name of uh, Professor Dr. Elvin. He talks about behavioral fluency. I'm sure all of you who have actually watched it, 
he actually suggests that there's a method that you can actually time the students' uh, uh, explanation time, right? So that to uh, and, and allow them to like really free flow and to give out their information uh, spontaneously from there. So we're gonna time every teacher over here as well. So we're gonna have two minutes. Is it okay for everyone? Two minutes. Right. Let's for the questions. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, so minutes, yeah. So, so you have two minutes uh, to, to really uh, explain uh, on the uh, questions that we actually have for all of you. And if you actually exceed that two minutes mark, right, I'm going to give you one point over there. And uh, for the for the end of the session for today, who has the oh highest point, right, will have to sing your favorite song, right? Oh. Uh, in front of everyone. Okay. Good. <laughs> Wait, how should we know about the timer, Jay? Right. Uh, so, so I will be uh, I'll be doing the timing over here, and then uh, I, think, uh, I, will, I will not tell you. It's just the end of the day. I will just let you know on the timer. Oh, we'll be surprised then. <laughs> okay. All right. So, so let's start with the first rapid fire question, right? So, uh, let's let's start from Teacher Tina. So, Teacher Tina, tell you, uh, tell us about uh, after long days of work, right? Uh, mm. What song would you sing to uh, release stress? What's your favorite oh. song? <laughs> um, <laughs> actually, I am I am listening to uh, Christian music today. So uh, I have a compilation of uh, Christian music. Right. So that the is the, how the I song title the song title. The song title. Oh, you have to watch out, guys. Uh, you need to check the uh, one that it's a Filipino song actually. But then, um, Dakila. Okay. Dakila. Dakila. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So, so I'll hold you on towards it. So uh, later, if uh, there's a chance, then you teacher Tina will be singing Dakila. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, teacher Joyce, uh, you as well. After a long hard days at, at work in school, uh, going back into your house, uh, you say you like to sing a lot. So, what's your favorite song that you would like to sing? The name and the uh, author of the song. <laughs> I don't need to sing, right? But I really love to listen Michael Bublé. Michael Bublé. Michael Bublé. Okay. Yes, home. Right. That song always can calm me down. All right. Okay. Uh, but so, uh, this, this song, I want to have a request for teacher Ian, please. Okay. Right. <laughs> I don't know that song. Just male. Just male. Okay. I don't know that song. Yes. <laughs> That's a really nice song. Yes. <laughs> All right. So, so that's from Teacher Joyce on Michael Bublé Home. And then next up, uh, Teacher Lucy. A uh, favorite song? I, I think I listen to a lot of songs uh, like, like, Chris, like Madam uh, Tina. I like to right. listen to Christian uh, one, songs. One song with the title and the name that okay. you would sing at the end of a long, hard day's work at school. Amazing Grace. Okay, Amazing Grace. Okay, all right. All right. I, I'm sure a lot of uh, you know how to sing Amazing Grace and also uh, Peter <laughs> Ian as well. All right. Oh, so I don't really um, listen to music, but um, some of the music that uh, I listen to is from the songs of Bruno Mars, Just The Way You Are. <laughs> Maybe okay. that one could count. I love that too. Okay, it's just the way you are, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Oh, that's a very high pitch song. I guess uh, it's no problem for people, Ian. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so that was the first round of question. Okay. Let's let's get into uh, much more serious in a way, uh, probably also. So during the education, would you be able to tell us more about? Uh, the education uh, philosophy that you currently hold. So uh, in your mind, right, how would you approach education in your school and uh, which form of style would you describe your education method? So a lot of teachers have told me that, hey, we should have a lot of fun in, in class. We use games, uh, we use a lot of interactive activities. So just to let us know more about uh, how you are as a teacher. So probably we can start with teacher Tina. Uh, two minutes in timing. Uh, oh. on, your, on your education style as, as well. As well. <laughs> Philosophy as well, right? Okay. Um, actually, I as a teacher, I believe in three things. As a teacher, uh, leadership, empowerment, and commitment. Leadership in the sense that I believe that each teacher must be a leader. Otherwise, we cannot produce leaders in our children. So, as a teacher, we must possess that quality. Uh, I also believe in empowerment. Why empowerment? Because we need to empower our children, of course to do their best, most especially um, if our children are somewhat like passive in 
inside the classroom. So as teachers, we need to empower them. We need to engage them in our in uh, our teaching and of course in learning as well. And the other thing is commitment. Why? Because I think each teacher must really be committed to their work. You are committed into something I believe that no matter how hard it is, no matter with or without the virus or with with or without the COVID, with or without technology, you can still um, you can still do teaching because you are committed to your work. So I think that's it, Jane. I I truly believe in those three: leadership, empowerment, and commitment. Okay, nicely said. So leadership, empowerment, and commitment as well. And I can see there's a lot of commitment on the fashion sense as well as education as well. <laughs> Coming from teacher Tina. Uh, okay. Well, wise words to live by, all right? So, all right, uh, okay, you didn't uh, exceed the two minutes mark, so that's good. Uh, so next up, uh, Teacher Joyce, uh, on education philosophy, uh, what do you think that education is like? Uh, and as well, how do you actually approach education in your own school, Teacher Joyce? Uh, for me, working with kindergarten is uh, like a performing arts on the stage. So when they come to school in the morning with, uh, with still with pillow face, I want them when they go out from school, they uh, turn into a uh, cheerful kids and then happy. And then of course in kindergarten, we are learning by playing. So they not realize they are studying with uh, uh, not with the uh, old times uh, teaching method, but then uh, in kindergarten, we must create a fun world for them, a neverland for them. So they realize they got a uh, a value they get the education they get a uh, new knowledge without they realizing it so uh, my target is simple when they go home they don't want to go home so they want to stay at school because they love it that's uh, that's the environment we try to create in kindergarten that's why i push my teacher hey teacher especially in this coffee time now we must be a dancer a singer, a presenter, <laughs> right? All of you is smile means you are agree, right? And then plus, <laughs> and plus, now we must be a counselor because uh, our parents, school parents, have uh, difficulties in economics. So we must be in a counselor and we must be in their best friend and being best, their, uh, their best tutor to do all this difficult process. So, uh, Come on, teacher. After this COVID time, we are 10 step forward. Yay. Go, go, teacher. Spirit. That's from me. Not more than two minutes, right? right? I hope. <laughs> I'm really nervous. Past the time. <laughs> All right, uh, you, just a little bit before that time, so, so it's still good. Okay, so thank you, Teacher John. Wow, yes. uh, so it's about creating cheerful environment uh, so that they don't even want to leave school by the end of the day. Okay, wow, very nice. Uh, and we'll dive in deep as well on how you actually approach that uh, shortly in a while as well. So we go on towards uh, Teacher Lucy. Uh, so Teacher Lucy, would you be able to tell us your education philosophy and how you approach education as a whole? Uh, yes, Jay. Okay, so uh, these are the four areas I truly believe in. Uh, as Professor Abdul Karim alias mentioned in our education summit, the students actually they demand the experience, not solely the education. So I believe in the first area, I think a lot of things is more towards a student centeredness. Uh, my principal, Mr. Bakia, keep reminding us teachers talk less, you know, we want the students to be the one who's in the highlights, okay? So I actually love it when my students are taking the stage where they are in front, telling things when they are the ones doing researching and when they are the one presenting, writing, presenting, performing even. And secondly, I also believe in collaborations like what we are doing now. So back in Kapit, when I first started my first year of teaching, I had the opportunity uh, under my mentor, Jared, uh, we had these uh, inter-division collaborations, writing pen pals, and with collaborations with um, principals, either uh, JPN offices, and even the public community. And the third area I truly believe in as a Christian is actually the spiritual fruit. So I have this teacher who actually encouraged us to start up the Christian club. So early morning, as early as 6 o'clock, these Christian students, they will come to school and they will pray 30 minutes 
right before the school start. And I think that is marvelous. And the fourth area I believe in education is actually uh, self-development. I strongly believe that uh, as educators, we must constantly develop ourselves. Nowadays, there are so many resources easily available, like attending these online courses for free, you know, international speakers. We actually save a lot of money during this COVID season, and I felt like it's a blessing in disguise. We get to meet people from around the world and listening from our various sources. So there you go, Jay. Student-centeredness, the division collaborations, even international collaboration now, and spiritual food as well as self-development. Okay. All right. Wow. Just in time as well. So, Teacher Lucy, I see that. Uh, well, yeah. Just just down the mark, down to one second, right? So, I guess, uh, Teacher Lucy, I, I see that you are involved in a lot of uh, discussion as well as international school and education discussion and collaboration as well. So, we'll talk a lot more about that shortly in a while as well on your various different experiences on that, which I think uh, will help a lot uh, for for teachers and to open their perspective on that as well. Okay, all right. So finally, uh, we have a uh, teacher Ian Oranio. So, would you be able to tell us uh, all about your education philosophy and how you actually approach education from your perspective, teacher Ian? Okay. So, uh, upon hearing the, uh, that question, so there are um, four words which come out of my mind. One is being uh, having dedication in work because being committed in work um, means that. Um, when you love what you're doing, so that radiates um, on your um, ways on how to teach the children. Another one is fun. So kids nowadays really love fun. So um, usually in our mathematics class, we had a drill before we go to the activity proper, wherein the kids would really love the drill, specifically this uh, kind of activity wherein they are tied. So in mathematics, um, say for example, we have flashcards that they need to raise to go to the front. So they love it. Another one is uh, innovation. I believe that as teachers, um, we should um, never be tired to think outside the box. We should innovate. We should um, seek um, professional development, just like what we are doing right now, as well as to avail of um, free online platforms wherein we can use it in our class. And finally, I believe in the power of collaboration because um, uh, I believe that the success of teaching does not only solely rely on one teacher, but rather it is um, as a whole, the whole performance of the teachers in school or um, as a community. So that's all. Okay. Yeah, I, I guess the, the line is a, is a bit uh, laggy a bit, but but anyways, uh, so, so I hear from you is that education, innovation, thinking outside the box and collaboration as well. And and I see that uh, in your work, uh, Teacher Ian, is that you actually have a lot of uh, very different education method that you actually uh, put in education. Uh, so we'll talk much more about how to think outside of the box as an educator and how you can actually apply in your school as well. I guess you're teaching uh, mathematics, right? Am I right, Teacher Ian? Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. And I see that you have a lot of achievement uh, from you yourself as well as your students, which we'll dive in more deep uh, shortly in as well. Okay? Yeah. All right. So that was the, the first round of the the, uh, the discussion. I guess uh, for those of you who are watching, if you have any questions that you want to ask to Teacher Joyce, Ian, uh, Tina, and Teacher Lucy, uh, please do comment down below so that we can bring up the discussion and to actually ask teachers uh, from different countries on how they actually approach education from their respective countries as well. Okay, so for, for round two over here, I guess uh, we will have a very interesting discussion on towards this. Uh, during um, your education experience as a teacher, right? As a teacher, uh, teaching through uh, teachers in your respective class, right? What are the most uh, challenging situations that you have actually been in, as well as how do you actually overcome them as well, all right? So, uh, so the question is that you as a teacher, you have been experienced uh, teaching a lot of students. Uh, share with us in terms of your most challenging uh, situation as a teacher and how you actually came about to overcome them. All right. So we will start with uh, teacher Tina. Right. Teacher Tina, uh, take it away. Okay. Um, since we are actually doing online class, Jay, the most challenging in my part as an online teacher as of the moment, because imagine in a class, um, we are having like about an average 30 students. So I cannot 
determine if my students are really, you know, focusing or giving their attention to me. So what I'm doing is this. Um, I am randomly asking students questions about my topic. So um, supposing, because there are students whose videos are turned off, we also consider that because most especially if the connection is not really good. So we are actually advising students. So as much as possible, you may just turn off your video. Um, just make it sure that you can hear me clearly. You can see my slides. You can hear your classmates um, discussing about something. So what I'm doing is uh, to check really if the video is on to check whether they are really listening and giving their attention. If the video is off, then I am giving time actually. So like I'm counting, uh, just like I need to count five, uh, up to five. If you cannot respond, <laughs> then there will be some, uh, of course, uh, sanctions to that one. So maybe, maybe, I don't know, because other kids, they do have that group chat. So they are actually maybe in my... Um, uh, maybe they are giving tip. Hey, Miss Tina is calling you, so you need to <laughs> answer back immediately, you know, like that. So uh, that one, it's the most challenging part if you are doing online class. How to ensure and how to make sure that your students' attention are really into your lesson or not. Okay, uh, I, I wasn't <laughs> supposed to say anything just to see if you will continue. So just down the dot. So thank you for that. Uh, I guess uh, in terms of online learning, uh, a lot of teachers has been facing a lot of uh, challenges with regards to engaging their students. And uh, yeah, so so I guess Education Summit, uh, I, I guess you've been through Education Summit, there was a lot of solutions mm -hmm. as well as sharing mm -hmm. by all of the experienced educators as well with regards to this. All right. So um, thank you, Teacher Tina. So next up, we'll have uh, Teacher Joyce uh, to share about uh, some of your challenges as a teacher, as well as how you actually overcame uh, the challenges over there. So uh, Teacher Joyce, take it away. Okay. So uh, what I want to share now is uh, not uh, when coffee time, but before. What made me really uh, uh, realize that uh, education is uh, really challenging is when I'm teaching in special needs school. So in that school, it's mixed uh, between autism kids uh, with the mental retardation kids, with the cerebral palsy, with the Down syndrome as well. So uh, I want, uh, uh, each class is not uh, a lot, only contain maybe five or six kids. But, <laughs> but uh, that uh, the class is all uh, really dynamic. So uh, one day to another day is a really surprising <laughs> so one day when you uh, look at them come to school with a smile for a whole day will be a wonderland a peaceful day but if uh, they come already in the bad mood you can see from their face right uh, they came already bad mood it's uh, like a war zone in the classroom so <laughs> what i want uh, that's really challenging and interesting actually because Oh uh, yeah, uh, that need really a uh, high commitment from the teachers, right? So I, what I want to say, one day, uh, six of them have tantrum. Wow. So what can I do? So uh, I I drag one one kid with my right, uh, left hand, the other one with right hand, and then the other one, the autism one, start to biting his lips so hard until bleeding. So what should I do? My two hands already occupied. So I use my other leg, my uh, my uh, left leg, to uh, keep them uh, with me. And then the other one, <laughs> starting to acting out too, using another leg. And then, not enough. The other two start to acting out too. So what should I do? I use my my hat to keep them quiet so they are uh, i tied them all together six of them and then after that in the end of the day for the special needs teachers uh, i salute thumbs up because it's really tiring uh, really physically and mentally but then when uh, we can see a little bit progress of them that's uh, really satisfied 
that's the reward big reward for us so i hope it's not past two minutes jay yeah <laughs> that's it just did. so uh, uh congratulations for being the first teacher uh, to get the first point so yeah so prepare <laughs> on <laughs> really <laughs> yeah, prepare on your micro yeah. oh right? my any other teacher yeah. okay. all right but uh yeah like on, on a serious note as well, uh, thank you so much for that sharing i guess a lot of teachers which are actually working with uh, special needs uh, education uh, students as well uh, there has been a, a lot of challenges from them uh, i guess uh, having to deal with uh, students with uh, autism, Down syndrome, and cerebral palsy, definitely it's a it's a huge challenge from there. I guess any teachers out there uh, who are actually working with special needs uh, education as well, please do comment down below so that we know that you're working with uh, students of that sort, so that we can have a conversation on that as well. All right. So uh, thank you, Teacher Joyce. Uh, so next up, we'll have a uh, teacher. Lucy, uh, to, to speak about some of the challenges as a as a teacher, as well as how you actually overcome them uh, with regards to that. So, Teacher Lucy. Okay, um, to be honest, when I first came back from the rural school in Kapit, I came to uh, SMK Batibintang, and generally it's a very good school. So most of the students, they speak in English, and this is English-speaking environment. So I remember very naively, two years ago, I had this uh, from five classes. The whole class, uh, 33 of them, we got A, like A-, A, and A+. Plus. I was so proud, you know, I said, oh, fantastic, you know. But little did I know the next day, uh, some of my colleagues asked me, what happened, Jaying? The class, the whole class should get A+, plus, not A-, and A, and then, oh my God, that was my challenge. Yeah, so, um, well, language-wise, they are okay. But now I would like to see what are the other areas uh, they can improve on. So my time allows me to share one slide. Okay, so I have to address question, challenges. I would always like to think that challenges are actually like learning opportunities. Back in 2017, even back in Kapit 2012, like I mentioned, I actually love to engage these uh, professionals, the community to come in to reach to my students. We invited pharmacies, doctors, businesses, and it is the students who will ask these professional questions. It's like a QA like what we are doing now. And then uh, in 2017, we have to we face challenges. Of course, we have in cultural exchanges. It is uh, quite a quite a uh, challenge, I would say, because the people in um, Texas, they the time zone, and everything, and then the standard of the students is a bit different. So we do encounter um, difficulties in completing the project together. But I'm very proud of my students in Batu Bintang. They submitted on time and we actually uh, got an uh, acknowledgement from the US Embassy and that's fantastic. And then um, last year, we had the opportunity to work with the Koreans. It's actually our principal's effort to connect uh, Malaysia to Korea. So we have these uh, Koreans from Jeju Island, it's Namwon Middle School. Do we have challenge? Oh, yes, we do. It is a Zoom connection and uh, surprise, actually, the, um, the Koreans actually they have a, English is not a, a major, like, um, it's not their mother tongue. So they find it very challenging to communicate in English. But again, our students in Malaysia, in Batulintang, be this proud. They actually wore their traditional costume and then they presented so well. And this was a, in the local newspaper and I'm very proud of it. And moving on to the most recent one, COVID. Though COVID is like a great challenge for all of us teachers as well as students, but in the end, it's the five months we are in the lockdown, MCO, but over the time, we actually had a wonderful time with our students. We can even hold speech competitions, school-level competitions online, and we can ask our students from other classes to vote for our best speakers and whatnot. And yes, our winner for this school level will actually represent our division to go for state-level competitions. So Jay, challenges to me is a wonderful learning opportunity. Right. Thank you. Okay, so teacher Lucy, congratulations again for being the second speaker uh, to go over for, uh, two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, worries, uh, uh, we see that there's a lot of uh, uh, different initiatives that you have actually worked with uh, students. And, and that, uh, I guess, you're more of a teacher that uh, focuses more on the student uh, development, uh, merely uh, focusing on getting better grades, uh, better results in school. 
Um, yeah, so we'll, we'll discuss more about that uh, shortly in a while as well. Uh, I guess share with us on your education approaches, all right? Okay, so those of you who are having any questions for the teachers, please comment down below as well. So later we'll bring on any of the questions for the teachers over here. Okay, so it doesn't have to be questions about education. So if you have any questions to ask them about, hey, what song do you sing? Uh, how do you get such a nice uh, smile? Uh, so you can ask questions like that as well. Okay, so with regards to that, uh, let's bring it on to uh, teacher Ian Oranio. So uh, teacher Ian, uh, please do share with us as well, uh, you as a teacher, in terms of your challenges uh, that you actually face as a teacher, as well as how you actually overcome them as well, right? Okay, so as a teacher, I believe that I struggle with love. Would you agree with me that love is a challenge for all of us teachers? What I mean is that um, it is a challenge for math teachers to develop the love of mathematics for some learners because some learners really hate math to the extent that upon seeing numbers, so they are really afraid of. They are, they are afraid to love mathematics or even to try math. So what I mean is that the learner's attitude towards mathematics is really a challenge. So, but I always believe that love is a language where everybody deserves to enjoy. And in mathematics, both the struggling and the advanced learners deserve this. So as a teacher, I think that we should sow the seeds of love in the class by being a culturally responsive teacher. And for me, um, this can be done through employing strategies and techniques which can arouse the students' interest, such as employing strategies like games and by knowing our learners' potential so we could also introduce group activities and instill in them positive vibes in class. So I think that's it, Jay. For me, the struggle is love. <laughs> the love children who um, doesn't know how to love mathematics. All right. So yeah, teacher Ian. So I guess with love, right? Uh, I guess uh, you, you didn't mention on how you actually use your smile uh, to spread uh, joy as well. <laughs> <laughs> Right. So how, uh, this is a question, right? How how big of a part to have is it for a teacher to have such a beautiful smile uh, every day going into the classroom for students? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, no worries on that. Okay. So uh, so I guess uh, that was part of the challenges <laughs> that was faced by uh, different uh, teachers uh, as well as uh, from uh, the uh, preschool uh, to the uh, special needs uh, educators as well. So I guess uh, the next discussion will be in terms of uh, you yourself as a teacher, right? Uh, doing the, uh, uh, I guess uh, from let, let's let's bring the question more towards uh, the uh, the happy moments as well. Uh, you as a teacher, uh, in your experience as the uh, as a teacher in your your school, what kind of uh, achievement or success uh, that you would like to share with uh, audiences out there? Yeah, probably uh, we can start with Tina in terms of. Uh, any form of success stories as well as uh, wonderful experiences as a teacher that you would like to share with uh, everyone over here? Um, success stories, okay. Actually, I am that kind of teacher who really celebrates even little success, most especially to struggling learners. So when I see my struggled learners doing well or just like one step ahead, I am uh, happy with him or her. And as actually, uh, as a conversation, English conversation teacher here in school, uh, when I first taught the very first day, I really actually find my students um, very passive. Some of them are really very passive. So what I did was, uh, I actually ask them, what are your expectations to me as your teacher? What do you want? Uh, what are the expected output from this class? And uh, what are some activities that you suggest? So I designed, I designed my class in such a way that uh, that's according to their interests. So some of them suggested games. Some of them um, sub, uh, suggested like drills. So all of those things, I we did that one with regards to in connection, of course, with uh, with the syllabus that I prepared. So in the 
during this online transition, what I did was this. I asked my students to actually took a video of themselves. So took a video, what are your expectations? What are the su suggested activities? Because it's really very different. The, the things that we did inside the classroom was literally very different online. So we are actually exploring things that can keep our students, you know, um, attention. How will I actually, uh, how, how will I be a very good teacher online? So it's really a challenge. That's why I am asking them about the expected result and what are the things that really uh, interest them online. So they said games. That's why, uh, may I share my screen, Jay? OMG, I think I will be the third person. No <laughs> but then anyhow, it's okay. I prepared. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, okay, I'll just... Screen over there. I already know that. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Okay. Um, yeah, you're okay. able to share your screen so that, uh, yeah. Uh huh. How is it, Jay? Am I sharing my screen already? Yeah, so, so all of you teachers out there now, you know how it feels like uh, when you are actually putting time limit for students to complete their homework. Now, <laughs> 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 so back to us. It's really totally fine with me. So, um, so this one. I just want you guys to have a glimpse on what I am actually doing inside the classroom. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, before the COVID, kind of yeah. Am I sharing my screen now, Jay? Uh, yeah, I actually don't see, it, but, but no, uh, I guess just carry on. We'll bring it up uh, shortly in a while as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. Maybe we can add, um, hold on towards this uh, in, in a later question so you can bring up the, the slides from here. Okay. Okay. There you go. Yeah. How about yeah. that? Okay. Now I get it. Okay. There you go. There, there you go. Okay. So um, let me just share to you guys what I'm doing actually inside the classroom is this. Before the COVID, uh, before the COVID, I already used different platforms in to reach out to my students. So that's through WhatsApp and Instagram. So through WhatsApp, are we, the students, no, not me. The idea really was from the students because we have limited time. So what they, what they, what they suggested was they want to have a group chat as a class and that includes me and that group chat is only for English conversation. In there, we actually um, ask questions. It's not, uh, it's just like um, informal way of saying hi, hello, how was the lesson, like that. And through WhatsApp, they were able also to pass their outputs, their projects like um, broadcasting, advertisement, self-introduction, other videos that I am asking them to pass and then uh instagram why we use instagram because i find out that most students in our school are using instagram so actually um what i did was this in my instagram account i posted these these kinds of uh, what i call this uh, just to trigger their minds and actually i didn't ask them to answer. I just posted it one time. One day I just posted it. And then the students were able to see and they engage a lot. And imagine, take a look at the picture at the center. Some of uh, the students said, uh, I hope it's true because it takes me 45 minutes and it's a hard problem. <laughs> so um, that's for me, it's a success because I am not asking them to engage. It's, uh, the, it's for them that they want to engage in that one. They want to answer. So for me, um, it's like uh, the, the intention of learning really comes within. So for me, it's a, it's a simple success already. And then imagine these kids are some of them are passive inside the classroom in chats they are actually active so it really makes me smile as a teacher knowing that some of my students 
can actually hardly uh, talk inside the classroom and then in chats they are doing very well and then um one time actually uh just to uh give you some ideas uh what i am doing is really a game based instruct a uh, game based strategy inside the classroom just to let my students be active also even just a simple game like spin a bottle is really a fun for them what we did was this um i gather all of them in a circle and then you know when i said hey when i i want you guys to arrange your room in such a way that all tables and chairs are put at the side so that when we start our lesson we will start the game and then imagine uh even just uh, 10 minutes before they were doing all of that when i entered the class they were so excited about the game and then of course some of them are still speaking in bahasa but what i am into is their interest to study so in just simply spinning a bottle because if you will be asking any volunteer of course no one will volunteer <laughs> <laughs> any volunteer to read this any volunteer to do that for sure no one will volunteer so we're doing it in such a fun way and then um in the spin a bottle if if you will be chosen if the bottle points to you then you will you will have the chance of course to talk <laughs> and then like um i posted a um, a line and then they need to deliver that line in a happy mood or angry mood depending on the mood that they want to portray and this one i also posted success stories uh, because children love to see their faces in instagram so that was one of our projects wherein students were able to have the show and tell i selected best outputs and then posted in my instagram accounts and then um many actually from this from the school are watching that one so that's it uh i celebrate even little success jay so okay. as a teacher that's uh you know i celebrate with my students success as well all right so you see teacher tina she uh she's very passionate in a way and she's sharing a lot of the uh, stories even though she has uh, just garnered four points uh, because for going through four times the two minutes <laughs> line. So, Teacher Dina, you have four points. Congratulations. Oh, but, uh, <laughs> but on a serious note, uh, thank you for that sharing as well. I guess uh, we actually uh, saw that in the education summit whereby there was a, a few speakers. I, I guess it was uh, from Burnett, right? Sharing with us uh, how important it is to really understand uh, the student's emotion. Right, especially online, you should really gauge uh, how happy are, uh, are they feeling okay? Are they happy? Are they sad? Are they feeling um, how how's their current uh, state of mind before actually yeah. proceeding on towards uh, starting the online education class? Right. So uh, yeah. So, so for those of you who want to find out more about this uh, education summit in the unit session, uh, you'll be find out more about uh, sharing from speakers with regards to the mental health and well-being of students when you're conducting online education classes. All right. Yeah. So uh, next, I, I guess uh, from teacher Joyce as well, uh, some of your success stories as a teacher, as well as some of the achievements that you want to, that you want to share with the audiences out there. Okay, and now my turn to share the screen. Please stay. Okay. Okay, so this one. Uh, so this is my Down syndrome kids, as you can see. Uh, I found it a uh, band. I managed to make them a band, a group band. This is the performance. So my success story, what should I say? Uh, when see them on stage and then they can, they can feel happy and express themselves. Uh, they have a passionate in music, so they can play uh, their own music instrument. Day. Each of them, uh, what uh, they're singing, and then they playing drums and playing keyboards. 
so my what make me smile in the end of the day is when seeing their smile too because they go something and they have fun with it and then for my Westin students uh, in Westin school we have a lot of performances and then uh, once a year we have open house held every year before COVID for sure uh, in the performances so uh, for kindergarten uh, what what make me smile too when they really can express themselves too in on the stage and then uh, they feel happy and then usually uh, before performance for sure we make a practice uh, I use that practice as a token to exchange for them to uh, study study well and uh, study good so uh, i use them as a token so uh, they speed up their studies and then yeah uh, they can practice uh, that's what they want they're really excited to go practice for performance okay so uh next one for the teachers for the teachers uh, I think success story is like what I said before. Uh, now since COVID, we pushed to being a singer, a dancer, a presenter in one day. So I want to show you one of our last uh, our video lesson video what we make during this COVID time. Uh, maybe not me. Okay, so. So, okay. So all of this is teachers. We want to give the students another way of studying. We introduce Indonesian culture here with traditional song, traditional dance. So, yeah. I think this will pass two minutes, but it's okay. So, so this is the teacher's way to give the best for the students. Okay, I think I think enough, Jay. <laughs> okay, so so there you okay, go. Okay, uh, yeah. just uh, glimpse of so what we do. So I see that you also incorporated a, a lot of music and also dance in your in your classes to keep things interesting for uh, students uh, in in your school. Yes, because uh, I I believe music is universal and everybody loves music. So I use that music media and dancing media a lot All right. to okay. transfer the knowledge I want them to get. Right. Okay. One wonderful. I, I love the video that everyone is like doing this, uh, getting. That's fr uh, from Bali. You know Bali, Jay? Bali? Uh, Bali yeah, Island. Is Bali is yeah. really famous, right? Right. Well, what's, the, what's the purpose of it? What happens to the person after getting uh, the uh, so-called... Uh, <laughs> You so make that. me pass my two minutes, so you yeah. cannot count. <laughs> no worries, no worries. Uh, it's a presentation. Uh, <laughs> it, it, yeah, it's not counted. Anyways, we have two points already. Uh, but by the way, yeah. Well, what happens to the okay. kid over there? Uh, that, that is uh, the middle. Uh, get this tradition, uh, one of traditional dance, kachak dance, right? So, uh, 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 there's a... Uh, uh, wait a minute. So, they uh, like have a trance after they doing this. The people in the middle have trance. And then, should I show in here? I don't think so, right? Because they will like this, their eyes like this because they already have chance. Yeah, uh, I told you later about that. Okay. <laughs> no problem on that. 
Okay, so yeah, uh, so thank you for that, uh, Teacher Joyce. I, I guess uh, next up, uh, back to Malaysia, uh, Kuching, uh, Teacher Lucy, some of your successes as a, an uh, achievement as well as, your, as a teacher uh, coming from your uh, teaching background. Okay, Teacher Lucy would like to buy back her one minute by showing a one minute video. <laughs> okay. Okay, this is what we did, a uh, hash IP video. Um, we did uh, in class, uh, these are all my happy moments, my success stories. Uh, collaboration with USA and Australians coming, and then these are my students' product. So they actually shoot this video for a highly immersive uh, program in our school. So students actually write their script and then they rehearse, and then they actually go home and shoot these videos. So you can see the collaboration working at home with one another, even parents are involved with it. So in this class, they also learned about their technology skills. We invited um, photographers and videographers to teach them. Yeah, and this is with the TOEFL USA project. So yeah, our students will do this recording. Uh, we have international, uh, interdivision and national things going on and community. Yeah. So I think uh, the students give us the feedback that they learn things. Uh, that is the happiest for me. And they are appreciative of what we are doing and then they learn new things. Yeah, that's all, Jay. Okay, all right. So yeah, Teacher Lucy, I, I see that uh, you actually incorporated, uh, I see that you read a lot uh, about teaching philosophy. Uh, would you be able to share with us uh, as well a very short one on how, what are the current books that you're reading? And also, how are you actually applying that into your classroom as well? Mm, currently, I'm reading this, uh, Flow, uh, The Psychology of Optimal Experience by psychologist Mihalia Skizanzi Mihali. Okay, uh, he talks about um, the optimal experience. I find that it's a new awakening for me because Actually, a lot of things we have to experience it, even like now, I can say, that, oh my God, this is so stressful, I don't want to do it. But if I look at it from the point of view that I will be growing and learning new things and exchanging knowledge here, I thought that it's worth our time and investment. Yeah, so I would recommend um, you and us to read this book, Flow, by Michal Yang, a psychologist. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much for the sharing. I guess flow is it's almost like a getting them not to stress them out too much and not to allow them to relax too much to keep that balance in between that two uh, extremes. Yeah, to be immersive in the experience. All right. Okay, right. Uh, thank you so yes, much. Yes, to really Lucy. enjoy the experience of things. Yeah. Okay, so thank you so much, Teacher Lucy, for that. Okay. And uh, by the way, uh, Teacher Ian, and for all of those who are watching right now, can you hear this sound over here? Yeah. Uh -huh. So, so uh, my assistant and helper over here just uh, randomly brought out the bell over here so uh, everyone can get a look at the time limit over here. So uh, passing out the pressure down to teacher Ian as well. Uh, oh I guess there's a lot of achievement over there. <laughs> We've been saying that uh, teacher Ian's uh, achievement, we can have like two days uh, to, to go through the entire thing. So would you be able to share with us in a very short span of two minutes, uh, teacher Ian, on your successes and okay. achievements? Okay. <laughs> Am I sharing screen now? Jane, can, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. So here in the picture, so um, we enjoy, I enjoy coaching mathematics and journalism competitions. So we won different, uh, we won different awards such as in Metropan and the Ed Math Challenge, which is a um, yearly um, mathematics competition held here in our country as well as um, we also won international awards in various mathematics competition, such as the Hong Kong International Math Olympiad, the Math Without Borders, the SASMO, and among others. So aside from that, um, I also enjoyed um, training teachers. Some of these are flash and screen. Aside from that, uh, I also enjoy um, writing instructional materials, specifically writing books in mathematics, as well as workbooks and worksheets. So at the bottom left, those two workbooks are actually used as part of the Beyond Horizons for Literacy program, 
of the school's division of Iloilo, which has been sponsored by the USAID and the uh, Basic Education Sector Transformation. So those workbooks are being used as a remedial material for the learners who are struggling. So aside from that, um, currently we are working on math packs. So I have been a writer of math pack for grade two and grade five. So the purpose of the math pack is to uh, make a um, um, such a worksheet wherein um, it is um, short, but um, learners would really um, go deeper into it. And then uh, part of the math pack, there is a numeracy skill wherein they can practice their numeracy skill towards fluency. So aside from that, um, I have been a representative of the Philippines in the Knowledge Co-Creation Program sponsored by the Japan International Cooperation Agency in Japan in 2017. And also, I have been a participant of the Young Southeast Asian Leaders Initiative Regional Workshop on Empowering Southeast Asian Educators last 2019 in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. And I have been also a active in joining um, professional organizations, specifically in mathematics, such as the MTAP IC. So as you can see, in MTAP IC, we are doing, um, um, we are reaching out to the field. So we are giving free trainings to the teachers, specifically on content and pedagogy in mathematics. And also, um, once a year, we gathered teachers and students in our annual convention where in there um, we discuss uh, problems as well as solutions, as well as sharing the best practices and uh, sharing uh, researches. So also I, I am also a member or the volunteer mentor of the Asian Math Science Incorporated Philippines, wherein we train potential contestants of the Philippine team to compete in various international competitions. So aside from that, Amsty Philippines also provides free training for teachers to enhance mathematics competency. And uh, because of uh, I have been part of Amsty Philippines, I've been given a chance to uh, serve as one of the team leaders of the Philippine team in the Malaysian International Mathematical Olympiad last 2018, wherein uh, the Philippine team has snatched bronze as well as silver medals. And because of those work, the school's division of Iloilo has just re recently um, recognized me as the outstanding elementary mathematics teacher. And we got, so uh, I, together with uh, my cousins who are also passionate in mathematics education, have decided to make a page in mathematics wherein um, we share content such as, uh, as simple as this one, also um, trivias as well as quotations wherein we could reach out um, children in the field, also for teachers to share resources. We also um, posted games wherein uh, it could enhance learners' fluency in mathematics even though that they are away from home. And also this is one way to, of preparing students as they cope with uh, the new normal. So I guess that's it, Jay. Thank you. Okay, so thank you so much, Teacher Yen, for that uh, presentation. Uh, just by the way, uh, the Mathy Go, right? Uh, can any of the teachers yes. out there, if they're interested to find out all about it, can they get access to the Mathy Go program? Yes, yes, sure, uh, sure, Jay. They, um, it is a public page for everybody um, who was willing to. Um, uh, they could uh, go to the page and then they could share resources to it. Yeah, they could access to it. It's for free. Right, so uh, teacher Yen, I'd like to applaud you as well, as well as all of the teachers over here uh, for all of the amazing achievement and, and experiences that you have just shared with us. Uh, so uh, I, I guess uh, a lot of the, I see that there's a lot of questions from the audiences over here. And by the way, Ian, uh, you, you have two points for this round, right? Uh, but yeah, anyway, just, just a side note. Okay, so, so I guess uh, let's go into a, a, a much uh, a light uh, question over here before we go to the audience's questions. Uh, I see that there's a number of questions over here. Uh, let's start with uh, some um, life, uh, lifestyle uh, uh, situations over in uh, your respective countries and cities as well. So maybe we start with uh, teacher Tina over here. I, I just uh, introduced uh, us to, uh, if you're in Jakarta, right? What are your top two famous food that we absolutely must uh, try it out if we were to go over to Jakarta? 
OMG. <laughs> Top two food yeah. in Jakarta. Oh, your favorite food. <laughs> yeah. My favorite food, nasi goreng. And? <laughs> nasi goreng and then um, Miss Joyce, what do you call the pack of fruits? We just uh, had it last uh, last week. Um, a pack of uh, different kinds of fruits with uh, yeah. papaya, watermelon, rujak. Yun. rujak. All right, rujak. So and, you and must I guess try Gina, that. Because yeah, you're from uh, Philippines as well. One favorite food from Philippines. One favorite food from the Philippines is. Um, Oh, no, pochero. OMG, why are you asking those questions, Jay? You're making us starving here. Pochero, yeah? Pochero. Pochero, okay. yeah. What is that? Pochero is like um a soup with uh, you may uh it could be a chicken or pork or beef, then uh with some vegetables like potatoes and then Cabbages, and you may also uh, if you don't, you may also add some um, bananas. Right. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, I guess teacher Tina. The reason why I ask that is, is because you know uh, our our organization, Trophy Education, right? Uh, we actually go to a lot of schools, so we work with close to about three hundred over schools every year in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. So every time mm -hmm. when we travel to school, right, teachers over there are all so awesome. Every time when we visit a school after the event or the after the training session, right, they will immediately invite us to eat their local foods. So I have been uh, very graciously enough to be invited by teachers on all the different cuisines of all over Malaysia. So uh, yeah. just sort of bring in the question as well. Since we are not able to physically eat the food, so uh, sort of just describing the food from teacher Tina, right? And okay, I'll just give you a hint, Jay. Um, just in case you will be visiting Philippines, um, you must try balot, Jay. Oh, okay. Balot. Her, her balot. balot. Yeah. Balot, balot, balot. Uh, it's the, the, the egg with the, uh, the chicken, oh. the little chicken yeah. inside. Right? <laughs> he knows about this. Right, right. Yeah. Have you tasted it? Tasted uh, it? Never. I, I saw a lot of videos about it, but I never tasted it before. <laughs> also, it, it is a must try. All right. If okay. you are a foreigner in the Philippines. All right. So, so for those of you who are watching, if you have actually tried balut before, all right, comment uh, one. Uh, comment one if you have actually eaten balut before. Those of you who are watching. Okay. Uh, next up, very quick one uh, to Teacher Joyce also. Uh, I guess you're from Jakarta. Two foods, two favorite foods from Jakarta. Uh, nasi kuning, yellow rice, uh, and then nasi goreng. I promise to make for all of you guys, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I promise to, uh, to cook uh, fried nasi uh, goreng petai for all of us, right? When we actually meet, when you actually come to meet. Yeah? <laughs> yes, petai. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That's okay. two, right? Mm. Yes, that's two. Okay, thank you for that. And uh, teacher Lucy, uh, two foods over in Kuching, favorite food? Definitely Sarawak laksa and kolok mi, full stop. Sarawak laksa and kolok mi, yeah? Yes, okay. definitely. Okay, would you be able to describe for those of them who never have who have never seen Sarawak laksa or kolok mi before? It's like a vermicelli with uh, shredded of uh, chickens and shredded um, eggs, and the gravy is just so special. You don't get it. I mean, in Penang, in Johor, you have other laksa, but the one in Sarawak is still the best in Malaysia. So really, have to come and try our Sarawak laksa. Okay. All right. So, uh, those of you watching right now, uh, don't uh, don't switch the channel because you are currently watching an education program channel. It's just that we are talking about food. Uh, you, you might be a bit surprised that we're talking about food in the education summit, right? Yeah. So, uh, last one for teacher Ian. Uh, two favorite foods from Ilo Ilo. If you may be able to introduce to us. Okay. So, uh, one of my favorite dish, which is local here in Kamatuan, is tinuom, which is a uh, chicken soup cooked uh, wrapped in uh, banana leaves. Another one is uh, here in the Philippines, famous is lechon. So we have uh, lechon, it could be a roasted uh, uh, pig or uh, chicken. Yeah. Okay.
Okay. All right. So thank you so much for the food introduction. Hopefully, when we actually meet, we can try out all of the foods that you have just described over there. <laughs> okay. So, all right. So right now, uh, on the next session, uh, we'll be uh, addressing some of the questions uh, by the audiences that I see uh, over here. So um, I guess what will happen is, is I'll read out the questions, right? So every of the teacher would have about 30 seconds, right? 30 seconds to, uh, to uh, seconds. your best possible <laughs> way to address that question over there. Okay, so uh, six are high right now. So uh, let me know how it is. We try with 30 seconds. If it's not enough, then we increase it to one minute for the next question. Okay, so first question I would like to bring out over here uh, is this. Let me bring out the questions. Okay, I see that a lot of you are asking about this question. Okay, um, about uh, overwhelming days, where right? we spoke about uh, teacher having a long day, being stressed, right? Uh, do you have any tips to share to an uh, over? overwhelming day when you feel discouraged like after students make fun of you or don't want to listen to you or uh, how would you carry on to help them to learn and gain an education yeah i guess i, I will share a story also uh, some of the teachers that actually spoke to right they actually told me that during covid they they used so much of uh, effort and so much time to develop the online syllabus created out of scratch right in hopes that students will go through the lessons but end of the day out of his uh, 40 students from the class right only four of them turn out on class, so that was quite demotivating for them. But uh, just, just a side note on that. So we'll start with teacher Tina, right? Uh, do share with us uh, if you have um, days when you feel discouraged or if you have actually witnessed any of the teachers feeling discouraged, right? Uh, what would you actually do to overcome this, teacher Tina? Um, okay, if ever I, uh, I feel discouraged, most especially if my kids or my students are really not doing well. I try to reflect, reflect on the strategies, which, which of my strategies, which of my teaching skills are not effective. Because um, although we have smart goals, but according to, according to what I have <laughs> uh, joined in another session, it must be smarter. So we don't just, uh, the E and the R there must be, you need to evaluate and revisit or evaluate in such a way that there are some strategies, there are some things that are not really actually effective to our students. So we need to evaluate what are those. Right. Um, actually, it's really fine for you to pause for a while and then reflect on uh, how things are going on. So I think that's it, Jay. That's what I'm doing. All right, so very nicely said, short and simple in terms of uh, having to reflect on what causes that uh, situation to happen and also to pause down and also have an evaluation on how you can do better on towards that, okay? Yes, true. Yeah, very nice. nicely said, Teacher Tina. Uh, next up, Teacher Joyce, uh, with regards to overcoming days when you feel discouraged. Any comments on that? So uh, in our Western school, we have five, five cultural values. We call it CLICK. Uh, it, uh, it's a uh, caring, learning, integrity, collaboration, and kindness. So everything we uh, every time we feel down, we go back to that values again. So uh, it's caring, caring sometimes is tiring, but caring. Uh, the purpose is learning to integrate uh, to make the students uh, achieve something, and then uh, to collaborate to each other between teachers, between the parents in this COVID time. It's really important to make the parents as our teamwork, right? And then kindness. So that's the value. We always go back to that value from Western School values, uh, Jay, whenever we feel down. All right. 30 so good. Right, the caring methodology. Okay, very nicely said, uh, short and simple. And by the way, Tina, just now you scored one point and uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no worries, no. Don't worry about the point. Yep, yep. Just, uh, singing yep. of the song. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> they, they won't be pains. They won't be anything. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, so next up, we have a uh, teacher Lucy. Uh, any comments on that? Uh, with regards to if you actually feel uh, down or discouraged, and on certain days, I, I bet a lot of teachers do feel that as well. Uh, any any ways on how you actually overcome that? <laughs> to know myself better. I think I'm a very emotional person. I remember during the first few years when I started teaching and students made me very sad, I will just cry and let it out. And when I got transferred back to this new school, I also did one activity and then there's one student who said, 
uh, teacher, you have such high expectations of us, we couldn't make it. And then I just walked out and then I I was a bit sad. But then the get the unexpected things is there were a group of five students who came to the office and then they actually uh, apologized to me. They said, no, teacher, we disagree. We, we know that you are doing this uh, because you believe we have the ability to do so. And I remember a girl actually wrote a very long letter and passed it on my table and just gave me a tissue. And it was so touching and I still kept the letter. So I thought that it's okay if we are sad, we can just let it out. And um, perhaps maybe my students are 16 and 17 years old. They are more mature. Yeah, so it is easier to explain to them what we are doing is actually for their benefit. It is not to harm them. Yeah. So, so that's my take. Yeah. All right. So I, I guess it's okay to really let it out. Um, probably go on to the top of the mountain, shout it out, cry it out, and, and then after <laughs> drawing the emotions out, then you go back. Yeah. To the mountain, right. Okay. Yeah. That's a very good tip uh, as well. Uh, probably going on to sports, uh, running, swimming, that will allow the energy to go past and, and to uh, allow you to move on to the next step as well. Right. Nicely put on, on that way. Uh, teacher uh, Ian, uh, any, any thoughts on that, on how you actually overcome these when you feel discouraged? Okay. So being discouraged is um, a normal feeling of a teacher when a student made uh, fun of him or her. So uh, just like teacher Tina, so usually when, when I feel down, so I just go outside the classroom and then breathe in, breathe out. And then after some time that I feel uh, okay, so I will just go back to the class and then I think it's time to change strategy. So say for example, before I went out to the classroom, I had just a lecture and then the pupils felt discouraged. So I went out and then uh, I uh, find time to reflect on that and then breathe in, breathe out, and then go back to the class and then change your strategy. So I think that will work. Okay, very nice. Uh, short and simple from teacher Ian. I guess uh, every teacher has different approach. So teacher Ian's breathe in, breathe out is almost like bringing your thoughts back to the moment, right? Uh, to what you have right now at this moment, this moment of time. I guess a lot of times uh, anxiety, pressure, stress always comes toward uh, unexpected um, expectation for the future. Uh, uh, Things that you're worried upon, it's always in the future, right? What, what might happen in the future if I didn't do this? So that causes stress. Or you might be living in the past as well um, in terms of what happens and you dwell on towards that. So the breathing, breathe out timing actually reminds you, hey, you only have this one moment and let's see what you can do to the best effort in this current moment, right? Uh, nicely put on that. Uh, okay, uh, I guess let's go on to the next question. Is everyone okay? All right. Uh, okay. I see that you're a bit... A bit uh, with regards to the points, right? I'll reveal the points later. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, okay, I guess it's a very good question as well. Uh, with regards, I, I get this a lot from the education summit, uh, whereby uh, during COVID, right, they actually have uh, a lot of teachers are actually uh, bringing on towards uh, online teaching. So um, uh, a teacher over here wants to ask about this. Um, in terms of online lessons, right? how do you as a teacher, uh, would you be able to share with us, how do you make your online lessons uh, interesting, right? So, so I guess some of the teachers actually has low bandwidth and high bandwidth, um, probably no internet access as well. Uh, do share with us as your best effort on how do you actually make your online classes or your classes during COVID uh, more interesting, all right? So we start with uh, teacher Tina. Teacher Tina, any comments on this? Okay, so actually we are so blessed enough because the area where I am teaching right now has high bandwidth. So with regards to that one, um, as what I mentioned before, uh, before the start of the school year, I am asking my students, what are your expectations? What are the things that you want to do during the online lesson? And then I designed the syllabus according to what they want, and that what, what they are expecting. So... Primarily, children love games. Uh, children love to, you know, do some group activities. I'm, I'm doing that one. I'm doing, uh, I'm doing that one to keep them interested. And of course, uh, uh, recently I did um, activities like storytelling, poetry interpretation, oration on like the one that we are doing say something about the picture given the time limit advertisement debate we're doing lots of things various things just to keep them interested in the lesson I see. 
okay, yeah. Because you know, by the way, I see that uh, Western School actually has like a YouTube channel that shares with teachers. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. uh, how how do they actually get access to it, uh, this uh, uh, channel or any of the materials? Oh, can I share my screen about it? Sure, no yes. problem. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Uh, it's not going to be counted in the time. Don't worry. Yay! Thank you. <laughs> oh, and okay. we... So let me share our YouTube channel of the Western School. So since the COVID started, actually the school launched this one. Okay, so we call it Edu Class. You can search Edu Class in YouTube. So that's that. These are uh, some of our few uh, what they call that live streaming that we did. Yes. Uh, the picture at the left were the first live streaming that we did. And uh, actually, why we did the YouTube is because uh, we were asking the parents, what are the famous or what are the famous websites the children are visiting most of the time? So actually, uh, the idea really went on because uh, the children said that they are into YouTube. That's why the school tried to open this one, the edu class in YouTube. And we did live streaming about uh, different activities. Uh, students enjoyed that one. And then um, there you go. We uploaded other learning materials and learning resources, learning videos in our YouTube channel. So that's edu class. You may visit that one. Uh, actually, I think this is the first um, live streaming platform in uh, Indonesia. I'm not sure of that one. But then because of this, actually, we, uh, uh, we reach out to almost all of our students from KG until uh, senior high school, Jerry. All right. Okay, yeah. awesome. So those of you who are interested to find out more about what uh, Teacher Tina is just mentioning, uh, on all of the different games, storytelling, debate, uh, there, there's a variety of them, right? like what you have just mentioned. Probably we can have future uh, discussion with Teacher Tina as well on some of the methods that you actually employ to better uh, teach or engage students during uh, COVID. Okay, so next up, yep. uh, let's uh, hear uh, from Teacher Joyce. Uh, how do you keep uh, students uh, interested or engaged uh, in online classes? Okay, I want to share the screen too, please. Yeah. Okay, this is the video I just showed you. So we have a, a, we make the video and post it every single day for every lesson. For kindergarten, the model of video is like this. So it's not like a one-way teaching, but then uh, we have a storytelling, we have a drama. We have a uh, dancing, singing, all, all teacher is acting. <laughs> so uh, I hope the student can reach the message and uh, happy, have fun while they watch this. Okay, and then uh, during, uh, Ms. Dina already explained about YouTube live streaming, Western School Health. So uh, as you can see, uh, it, I present it's a small world. So this is like musical. Uh, this is our costume. So this is like musical. Uh, I travel all around the world. That's the story. So I go to Africa, I go to India, I go to Korea. Uh, because uh, everybody needs to stay at home. So I bring the kids travel all around the world in a mm -hmm. musical, in the musical, and then uh, present in live streaming. This is one of the strategy we use to entertain the kids. And then this one, this one, uh, this is products from parents, as I explained before, Jay. So uh, in this COVID, a lot of business is closed down or uh, the benefit is reduced a lot. So this is our initiative from the school. We help, we help the parents to promote their products. This is products from parents what they sell. So we promote and post it in our platform, in our uh, Instagram, in our Facebook. And then uh, I'm really happy because this is really work for the parents. So the business uh, uh, getting uh, getting raised again now. And then, uh, so this is another teacher performance for Independence Day. 
So this is my team in kindergarten. Uh, we make a performance too. Yesterday in the Indonesia Independence Day is uh, 17 August, which is Malaysia is 31st, yes, 31st uh, August, Malaysia Independence Day. Right, which is tomorrow, by the way, yes. Uh, yes, tomorrow. Okay, so that's the, our strategy day, right. especially for kindergarten. Okay. So make so the so online. Students, um, we do a lot of musical, a uh, lot of performances, uh, and, and you engage with them on screen and ask them to participate together as well. Yes, yes. Uh, okay. Right. Uh, yeah, see, and, and you are promoting food as well uh, to kids, right? Uh, in terms of varieties of food. So, Tina, it's not that I'm the one that's bringing food. Uh, even Teacher Joyce is bringing up food education and food introduction as well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. uh, okay, uh, so so next up uh, from Teacher Lucy as well, a uh, very short one as well. Uh, how do you actually keep your students engaged in online classroom? Is, is it my turn now? Uh, yes, Teacher yes. Lucy. Uh, can you hear? Yeah, Teacher okay, Lucy. Yeah. So I think um, the first thing we did, okay, I'll break it down into three things. The first one is after our first online meeting, which is scheduled by the school, I actually created a a survey Google form and after the lesson, I asked all the students to fill it in so they will tell me if they enjoyed most, what are the things they enjoyed most and what would they like us teachers to prepare for them for the next lesson because it's a new norm. So best from the results from the Google feedback form, I realized all of them loved, how, what do you call that again? Quizzes. Quizzes, they loved it so much and then they were all asking for it. So. Subsequently, for all of the lessons, we must include quizzes in it. And believe it or not, actually, I had to give a home tuition. So when my uh, primary school student came, like what, uh, nine years old, 10 years old, we actually, some of them come for tuition and some of them are still having Zoom online classes. I was so surprised. They were jumping up and down, kicking, shouting. They were so excited behind it. Like, yeah, because on the screen, we can't really see how excited they were. But the kids, they were really so excited behind the screen. So I would definitely promote Quizzy and all those technology things that they do. Again, it is a student-centered. It is not, it wouldn't work well if it is the teacher, teacher talking throughout the session. So always give students the opportunity to talk, ask them questions and ask them to talk instead. Yeah, that is uh, all from me, Jake. Okay, right. Uh, so I guess teacher Lucy is similar to teacher Tina as well. So you got to really find out what the students really want and what they find uh, interesting about and really try to incorporate the uh, education syllabus together with that as well. So that includes games uh, and if you have the uh, ability to use technologies or softwares like quizzes and, and different software as well. So uh, for those of you teachers who want to find out more about different softwares that you can use, you can check out uh, teacher Tina's website, uh, probably uh, teacher Lucy. Um, uh, maybe you can share some of that uh, with students as well uh, and the teachers watching. And of course, uh, in the Education Summit, there are a lot of speakers that actually spoke about uh, the different platforms, different software that you can uh, actually find and, and utilize uh, to make your online classroom more interesting as well. Okay, so uh, I guess teacher Ian, uh, we have actually spoke about this uh, yesterday with regards to online learning. Uh, and I guess yeah. there's a question over here from the Philippines as well, uh, with regards to the difficulty on online learning due to limited internet connection. So would you be able to share as well from your experience, uh, how do you actually make uh, uh, education more interesting during the COVID time as well? Yeah. So actually here in the Philippines, so the public schools hasn't opened yet. Um, so classes um, are, are, are reset, uh, is reset to October 5. So with regards to um, teaching online, so we have the same case where in that um, we have low bandwidth, internet connectivity. Uh, in our case, so uh, I think um, we could use platforms that uh, utilizes, um, that, can, uh, that can utilize low bandwidth uh, data, such as uh, I think Hub Human could be one or Quipper, I think, because um, that was discussed in one of the uh, online learning modality here in the Philippines, 
wherein uh, paper could uh, be used uh, online or offline because um, you will just download the apps and then uh, learners could answer um, the questions while uh, while being offline and then when they are ready to submit that one so that's the time that uh, they will need the data in order to submit the, the work and then in return the teacher will check on it and then uh, return it to them for feedback so i think uh, using those platforms would be uh, very beneficial to uh, schools where in uh, online uh, where in internet connectivity is uh, very limited uh, yeah so, so it's almost uh, bringing in offline but uh teacher play a huge role in uh, connecting the uh, students with their homeworks. Uh, how do you actually uh, provide students with all of the homeworks uh, during COVID? Okay, so I think um, uh, we are ju we'll just be assigning uh, homework, providing them the link wherein uh, they could access on it. And then uh, when they download the file, say for example, they could uh, work on it at home and then when they are ready so uh, they that's just the time that they will uh, turn in to the teacher so i think that's it okay so yeah thank you so much teacher uh, Ian, uh, for, uh, I guess from your side as well i guess putting in a lot of effort uh, with regard to uh during covid and i, I guess teachers have been um, very creative in how to reach the gap uh, of education this time okay so uh, I guess there's a comment over here from Aziz Rajab. Uh, uh, okay. Can you see the screen over here? Okay. Right. Back online. Uh, so Aziz uh, says over here, from what I observed, all the smiles, the high energy uh, possessed and radiated out from everyone. Is from the passion for education. We're not only teachers, but educators. Uh, we don't only teach, but we educate. We may not be the best, but we give our best. And I'm feeling boosted listening from partners, educators from Indonesia, Philippines, and Malaysia. A beautiful country. Thank you. Wow. Okay, kind words from Aziz. Uh, Aziz has been a very good uh, uh, listener. Hopefully, Aziz, we are able to have you on board as well to share your education experiences. Okay. Uh, so uh, on from here, I guess there's one question that I really like to address over here. Uh, it's addressed to teacher Ian, but I think uh, everyone can answer on behalf as well. So we start okay. with teacher Tina from here. So uh, how would you handle a difficult student? So let's say, for example, the student does not listen to you or if they uh, behave in a very naughty way in your classroom, how would you handle uh, them or how would you work with them from that end? Yeah, let's start with teacher Tina on this. Yeah, uh, teacher Tina, uh, we, I can't really hear your voice. Is it uh, currently muted? I'm sorry, I am actually muted. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. So, as teachers, we must understand that sometimes our students will really have tantrums. Yeah, true. Uh, most especially if they are in uh, lower grades, like um, in grade one, grade two, grade three, kindergarten. So we must understand that one. Okay, so if there's a situation like we we have difficult students, okay, so what are we going to do is to understand, first, um, first and foremost, of course, to understand and know the reason why they are behaving that way. There must be a reason. Maybe because um, something happened at home. Maybe because they don't understand their le the lesson. Maybe because um, someone bullied them. So we must understand how, uh, which, which particular area where it comes from. And then let's try to address that one. Uh, let's find the root cause and try to address and look for solutions based on the root cause that we find out. So I think that's it, Jay. Okay. Nice words from there as well. Also, if I may echo on that as well. So students, uh, because uh, they might be younger or a little bit uh, mm -hmm. uh, still very young, so they, they might have uh, a bit of challenge in expressing what they really feel inside. So one of the ways in, in uh, communicating 
uh, is by using tantrum or by using ways that we might not feel comfortable with. So in fact, yes. that is one of the uh, symptom or in one of the ways on how they express themselves to let you know that, hey, uh, I'm not okay with uh, what is currently happening in the class, so I have to show you some signs. So uh, mm -hmm. it's for the teacher to really uh -huh. understand that, okay, why are you showing me this? There must be a reason behind it. And to really dig in and really find out, okay, what's the reason behind that you're throwing this tantrum? So very nicely said from teacher Tina. Uh, yes. Yeah, every teacher will have their own special stories with regards to uh, mm. interesting students in the classroom. So uh, back to, I guess, uh, from teacher Joyce as well. Um, I, I guess you can actually add in uh, from that. Uh, actually, same. We need to understand the background and the, uh, the cause, why it happened like that. But then uh, what usually I do in my classroom, because it's kindergarten, so I don't want to focus on their kids. So I try to distract them. I try to be clown. I try to use my uh, different expression or different uh, kind of volume, the, the, the voice I make to distract them and forget their own problem, their own tantrum. So they can follow me without I force them to follow. So like that. So I being a clown. Like that. That's my answer. Okay. To distract. Uh, I, I, yeah. So so in a way you use a, a different body language, different facial expression, yes. uh, in different emotions uh, so that yes. you are able to sort of like lead them on towards the uh, emotion that you, you might want them to. Yes. Uh, uh, being apathetic and to be on the same, uh, uh, same level as them uh, if they are too angry and to slowly lead them out of that, right? Yeah. Okay. Very nicely put on, on that way. Uh, definitely a, a teacher that teaches using music and, uh, and uh, performing arts. Uh, that's a very interesting tip over there. Uh, okay, next up uh, for teacher Lucy as well. Uh, I guess you are dealing with the secondary students, right? So um, those of them who are 13 years to 17 years old, so how would you handle a difficult student from your perspective? Actually, I do agree with uh, Tina and uh, Joyce that there is no shortcut. We really need to go and understand them, but the question is how can we understand them? So I talked to my principal and then he advised us we need to have a one-to-one -one talk <laughs> with the students. It's actually brought up also in the, the education summit sit down, talk to them and ask. So when students felt that, hey, good teacher, she, um, she she take notice of me, she's interested to know more about me. So I, I want to do well for her subject. I don't want to let her down. So sometimes it's this uh, human connection one-to-one -one that will boost, especially these like, other kids, huh? they are like, teenagers, they don't want to disappoint the teacher. So they will try their best. And if they can't pay attention, perhaps it's because uh, what they are giving them too hard, so maybe we lower it down, simplify it. When we simplify the task and they uh, can do it, they'll have a sense of accomplishment and they will feel proud and they will continue doing that. So those are my two points. Okay. Thank you, Jane. I, I guess um, back to the foundation of uh, understanding and communication. Understanding plays a huge and important first step uh, in between uh, a connection between two human beings, not as teachers, as students, but two human beings actually engaging in a proper communication. All right, uh, very nice to put uh, teacher Lucy. And uh, yeah, next up, uh, question for teacher Ian. How would you work with a uh, uh, difficult, small, difficult or challenging students? So usually I uh, have the same experience with teacher Tina, uh, but, and uh, usually um, I, um, I ask the, that difficult student to come with me and then uh, find a vacant room available in in school and then we talk about it so so that um i can discover um what's bothering him or what's the problem why of his or her unruly uh, behavior so i think that's it Jay. okay all right so, so i guess uh, i really love that how all four, four of you unanimously say that we have to really understand the situation as a number one step uh yeah can you hear Okay, so I really love that how all four of you actually said about yeah, Jane, you're a bit soft, actually. Yeah, still a bit soft, is it? Yeah. Okay. Yes, Jane. Uh, can you hear? Can you hear right now? Can you make it higher? Higher. Okay. Uh, can you can you hear right now? Is it good? 
Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I really, I was saying that I really love how all <laughs> four of you unanimously actually told about the, the building blocks is all about understanding, communicating with the students as number one uh, before even going to the next step on towards this. All right. So, yeah. So, uh, hopefully that answers the question from uh, the teacher that posted this question over here. Okay. So, uh, let's go on to something much more... Uh, 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 relaxed a bit so another question so we talked about food earlier right so uh yeah. with regards to um the different uh, uh teachers coming from different uh, countries right that are on board right here so would you be able to share with us on uh, the the famous places right uh, in your locality right uh in jakarta what is the best place that uh, if you travel to jakarta we absolutely must visit uh, the safest uh, your recommendation on where we should definitely go and visit if we actually visit your hometown. So let's start with Teacher Tina. Did, did you get the question, Teacher Tina? Uh, yes, I think about the famous place. Yes, two places that we absolutely must two visit. Places. Two places. Two. Oh. Um, actually, Jay, I, I have a bucket list of the places that I would visit. But since we have pandemic, <laughs> I only had the courage to go out um, two weeks ago, and I went to Taman Mini. So Taman Mini is uh, one of the amazing tourist spots here in Jakarta, where you can do some sightseeing. Actually, it is like a place where, and what do you call that? Um, each province, do you call it province, Miss Joyce? It's like Mini Indonesia. All like the provinces. Uh, each province is um, uh, there. representing yeah. their own culture like that. But I haven't finished. Of course, the place is so big. So big. Own, so big. Uh, like two or three hours to visit. And it's not enough. So I need to go back there, Miss Joyce. Okay. <laughs> I bring you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I think that's it, um, Jay. Taman Mini, yes. Taman Mini, okay. Mm. I will, I will add another one. Taman Mini is my choice too, and then I will add one more. Is a uh, old town, Kota Tua. So old town have a, a very historical. Have you ever go there, Miss Tina? Old town. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Uh, that's a one of tourist attraction too because uh, we are colonized by the Dutch before. Uh, that's a, a a whole building. A whole area is full of old colonial Dutch uh, building. That's why a lot of tourists visit there. So I recommend you guys when you come to Jakarta, let's go there and go to Taman Mini. So, Taman Mini and uh, Old Town, is it? Old Town in Jakarta. Yes, Old Town. All right, so uh, we quickly shift over back to uh, Malaysia, Kuching, uh, Teacher Lucy, two of your favorite places that we absolutely must visit in Kuching. Uh, I think uh, all the tourists should definitely visit our cultural village once. It is actually near Davai Beach and then you have the beautiful beach. And can I move further to our UNESCO, which is uh, uh, Mulu Caves. I've never been there myself, so it's a shame. Yeah, but then a lot of tourists, when they're flying to Sarawak, they will fly to Mulu Caves and then we'll need some stamina to climb up the cliffs and whatnot. I think that's definitely worth the go yeah, if you are in Sarawak. Yeah, Jane. So, so Damai, Damai Beach and Mulu Cliff. Huh? Okay. All right. And then uh, back to uh, the Philippines, Ilo Ilo. So, teacher Ian, uh, two best places to visit if we were to visit you over there. Okay. So, if we're to take it um, for the whole Philippines, so I'll recommend you to Boracay, which is famous for its white sand, as well as Batanes. Batanes is also beautiful. Those are the two places. But, but Tanis, I, I see that your school uh, is actually situated very near by the, uh, the river side, right? With a lot of greeneries and, and things like that. Is it more yeah. like a nature? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, actually, uh, the size, uh, the, the shape of Iloilo -Ilo is like a nose. Yeah, because it's, um, it follows the shape of the river, which is going to, to the sea. So that's it. <laughs> 
So thank you so much for, for all that question. So uh, uh, a slight uh, relaxation uh, question over here before we move on to the next question over here. And for those of you who are watching, if you really enjoy what you like uh, so far, please do give uh, teachers over here a like, uh, love, uh, send some emotion, emo emoji over here so that we know that uh, you're listening over here. And uh, okay, let's go on to the next question. Over here with, uh, uh, I guess uh, all four of you actually participated in our education summit. So um, be it uh, the second education summit or the first education summit, right? I think I asked you all this question as well. So uh, maybe you can share with us uh, probably uh, one to two things that you absolutely um, gotten benefit of uh, from the entire education summit. Would you be able to share some insight uh, that you actually learned personally that you feel that is very useful for you personally as a teacher from from all the panelists that you have actually heard from in the education summit, right? So uh, maybe we can start with teacher Tina. Uh, over, over to you, teacher Tina. Okay. Um, actually, there are three topics that I really love most. But of course, all the topics are really very nice. Only that uh, I chose these three topics. Um, the first one was during the education summit, uh, the first series about uh, about the low and high bandwidth. I forgot. I forgot who's the the speaker today. I guess there was uh, Alina. Then there was Bernard. Uh, they they spoke about low and high bandwidth. And then there was yes. Nazmi as well from. Uh, mm -hmm. from so if you are actually if you are actually looking for strategies, guys, on how to conduct online teaching both in high and low bandwidth, you have to check that what. You have to check that out because, um, wait, am I being timed in here, Jay? No, no problem. No, <laughs> not anymore. I must see. I might sing at the end. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> okay, well, anyhow, to continue, you know, there, in there, I got the idea because in the Philippines, we had, I started a project that's EETC. Um, virtual class. It's like a platform wherein I connect teachers and students. I design the syllabus personally. I train teachers online on how to teach them. Um, the objective is to provide an income to those teachers who lost their jobs during the pandemic. And of course, to address also the needs of those students who are still willing to do um, classes but then they cannot because of the covid and thus we address them through online so there was a student actually in which uh, she had a low bandwidth so how are we going to address that one was this um identify what platform she is familiar into so she's familiar with messenger so we conduct my teachers are conducting lessons through messenger they um, send pictures and then send instructions, step-by-step -step instruction in math on how to do equations, how to solve equations. And then um, the teacher, will, uh, the student will answer exercises, take a photo, send back to the teacher like that. So um, that's uh, how we address uh, online teaching in low bandwidth using Messenger. And then um, another one is uh, I w the international collaboration of schools. That's also very amazing because uh, I yes, yes, Jay. So you guys, if you want to collaborate with me, I am teaching from, <laughs> uh, let me promote this one, Jay, because I might find someone who is interested in collaboration. Yeah, maybe teacher Lucy, we can do that. Yep. Um, yay. And then of course, if you want to collaborate with us also, please do comment down if you want to collaborate with us, because I am actually planning to launch this project where we will be collaborate, collaborating with others, uh, other schools, uh, specifically, of course, in as much as possible international schools. Jay, I want to share my screen. Jay, will, will that be fine? Uh, Okay. Yeah, you can bring up the screen. Yeah. 
Yep. And for those of you who are watching right now as well, um, okay, let me bring on the screen over here. So those of you who are yeah. watching, and if you are, are representing your country, right, uh, if you're interested to be featured on the Edu Nation, uh, if you are coming from any of the countries that you actually spoken about, right, please do uh, message us and uh, email us as well at the uh, hello.edusummit. Uh, at gmail, right, uh, so that uh, we may be able to probably feature you on Edu Nation as well. Okay, so let me bring up uh, my screen over here. Okay, there you go. Yay, okay. So um, actually, as a Microsoft Innovative Educator Trainer, uh, MIE Trainer, we have that account called um, Sky, uh, what is this? Um, Skype in the Classroom. So Skype in the Classroom, please take note of that, guys. That's Skype in the Classroom. Skype in the Classroom is a very good platform where you can collaborate with other teachers worldwide okay so actually uh this will be my project in the next uh, months for my students um i'll be asking them to collaborate with imagine the author of uh, how to train your dragon with uh, Chrisida Howell. so you need to create an account in skype in the classroom and then you can access or you can have this opportunity to connect with these authors and also uh i'll be asking some of them to connect of course with um todd Parr. yeah okay so we have the skype in the classroom offers or connects teachers and those who are willing to you know um share their knowledge or share their skills. You can even connect to some astronauts if they are they are available. Volcanologists, yeah. Okay. And then um, this one. This is what can Skype in the classroom offer you guys. You can also connect with other classroom teachers. That's it. But then actually, when I try to browse this one, um, my problem is the teachers available are. Um, in the U.S. So I have problems with the time. Time zone. The, yes, time zone. The very reason why I cannot implement the project. And uh, But then uh, I, I really wanted to give it a try. So that's it. These are, this are the two of... These are some websites or applications where you can use to collaborate with uh, other teachers around the world. And of course, uh, wait, um, it's also best. Yes, Jay, can you still hear me? You are on mute, Jay. Uh, yeah. uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, Jay. Okay, so uh, I guess what will happen is that uh, after this session, I will set up uh, like a room. I'm sorry, Jay, but then I think we cannot hear you clearly. Okay, can you hear? Can you okay. Hear okay. So what I will do is that at the end of the, after this session, I will set up a discussion room in the education summit portal. So that any of you who want to find out more about what teacher Tina, teacher Ian with mathematics, and teacher Lucy and teacher Joyce as well, we can have the discussion within that uh, discussion room as well so that any of them who wants to find out more information can actually have a direct conversation with you. Uh, yeah, yes. Right? Yes, okay. definitely okay. fine, Jay. Awesome, because I, I see that uh, Teacher Ian, Teacher Tina, Joyce, and Lucy has many different initiatives that you are currently uh, working on that uh, you can open for collaboration with all the teachers that are listening right now as well. Okay? Right? Cool. So, uh, okay, where were we? Uh, yeah, Teacher Joyce, uh, with regards to Education Summit, uh, what... Ah. The, the key benefits uh, topic that you actually find most helpful you for you uh, First, from Jia Hong, Hero's Journey. Yes, I think second day for Edu Summit too. So I really love the topics. I really love what he's saying. And uh, uh, but I don't think we can really apply in kindergarten, but mm -hmm. I will uh, adapt the idea. Uh, hero's journey and then uh, the second one uh, about the colla international collaboration is 
Who's that? Dr. Sharon Wilson. Sharon, well. Sharon, yes, Sharon. Yeah, Sharon. Yeah. Uh, that's really uh, inspiring. So uh, really inspiring because uh, why don't we start to collaborate internationally? So uh, that's give really in, uh, new inspiration. And then the third one, uh, the third one is Datin. Datin. Uh, she talk about developing uh, and creative mind. Uh, that's really nice. That's really beautiful. Uh, I got a lot from that. A lot of idea to apply in my online class or offline class. And then the last one I really like uh, digital drawing, Mr. Pitbull, <laughs> Said, Mr. Said. Uh, but PT, I cannot really apply because I cannot really throw. So I like the way he gives to us, but yeah, I don't have talent, so <laughs> I give up on drawing. But yeah, that's what I get from Edu Summit. Okay? okay, thank you very much, uh, Teacher Joyce. Thank you for any time if you can't hear my voice, right? Just give me a signal. I may be able to adjust the audio over here. All right. Uh, yes. So next up, uh, let's go on to Teacher Lucy as well. Uh, some of the topics that are most beneficial for you after going through the entire education summit. Uh, maybe it can be series one or series two as well. All right. Uh, if you can see my slides, there are three takeaways from the education summit. The first one is actually patience is the key when we want to understand children. I think this is by. Putri, Dr. Putri, is it? Yeah, she mentioned about parents and tutors. Most importantly, we should not rush. Rush. We should allow them time to retain and digest the knowledge. So this is, I rush to an internet place just to get connection to attend this summit. So funny. And then the yeah, second one is by, what's the name? Professor Abdul Karim. Yeah. I really like his, uh, his speech because it started off by telling that education, a teacher, it is actually a journey. So it is all about our growth. So uh, for this, if you look at the chart there, eh, he talks about uh, being a novice teacher. So I think for my first few years in Kapit, it is, uh, I'm a novice teacher. I really grow a lot during that few years in the Kapit yeah, and with a lot of awesome mentors. And then um, Prof Karim also talked about being a professional teacher. I realize uh, an audience asked, is teaching a professional job? Uh, yes, in Malaysia, I think we are regarded as a professional job. Yeah, so Prof Karim in this session talked a lot about how to be a professional teacher. And then after professional teacher, there is another step, which is a scholar. He did not talk much about it, but I believe a scholar will be one who is actively writing research papers and contributing to the knowledge of uh, the world of academic. So that is another level for uh, a challenge for all of us educators. We have to constantly upgrade ourselves. And Prof. Karin focused about the professional says, as, uh, even we are professional today, the way we talk, the way we dress, we should portray ourselves as an educator. Oh, no, no. Look at this picture. I think oh, uh, if you can see this, yeah, it is actually educators, we should really reward ourselves. We are trying our best. There are times we really need to just temper ourselves. And these are the three takeaways I get. Thanks to you, Jay. All right. So thank you so much, Teacher Lucy. Uh, so the topics that Teacher Lucy was mentioning just now was from Education Summit Series 1, right? Series 1. Yes, Series 1. And so I don't do to Yeah. Yeah. From Putri Afzan and uh, from uh, uh, Putri Afzan, yes. Karim as well. Yes, Karim. How, yeah, how about the rewarding? There's a teacher who mentioned about reward, the, the second last speaker for uh, day one. Uh, for, for the education summit one, was it? Yeah, the second last speaker. I can't remember her name. Yeah. Yes. But but she mentioned about we have to report our self love, which is true. I like that part. So probably let me check it out over the schedule later as well. So thank you so much for that, uh, teacher Lucy. Uh, uh, and uh, to, uh, teacher Ian, uh, any any comments on that? Yes. Okay, so from the summit, I have three takeaways. One is from Dr. Alvin, another is from Dr. Law and another from Free and So. From Dr. Alvin, so, um, 
I have noted down that um, fluency is the ability to perform without too much difficulty, even in times of problem. So it is just like automaticity, wherein uh, um, learners need just a bit of practice in a short time every day so that um, children should not feel too monotonous. So just like in mathematics, so this is really applicable for me. So I need to make it fun, make it quick, and a lot of repetitions is needed for learners to not forget that certain skill. Because um, he has also mentioned that a satisfied ah. student is also a learning student. And I, I love that. Another one is from Dr. Law, which is uh, her topic on practical instructional strategies, wherein I feel that that is very meaningful and adaptable too. So like the marble painting, the daily greetings in form of high five, fist bump, handshake, and hug. So, and also I like the idea of giving a board, choice board for the kids. Also um, using mnemonic approach, um, multi-sensory approach, as well as scaffolding through using of graphic organizers and sentence starters. So I think these things, even though um, not in special education classes, even though in regular classes, these are um, beneficial for us educators. And finally, from Rini and Sue, so that's on personalized learning. So um, personalized learning, so it, it acknowledges that there is no one size that fits all. So therefore, differentiation is a must in order to cater the, unique, the uniqueness of our individual learners to ensure that no one is left behind. So these three takeaways, so I find it really meaningful for me as an educator. So thanks, OJ. Thank you. All right. So very nicely said, uh, teacher Ian. Uh, I guess uh, a lot of the sessions are really beneficial for the teachers. And uh, yeah, it's uh, the current platform is currently free for people to uh, have a look at it, right? Uh, so from, from this end. So let's see. Uh, can you hear my voice right now? Is the audio better? So I think it's, uh, better from here. Can yeah, you hear me voice? my voice. Can you hear my voice? Is it clear? Yeah. Yeah, when it's your turn to, to, to I have to increase the volume and other speakers, I have to reduce to five. <laughs> okay. So, uh, is it is it okay right now? The sound of break. It's okay. uh, a bit breaking, right? Okay. Yeah. It's breaking, breaking. Because of the internet connection, you'd say. Okay. Right. And uh, I, I guess uh, from, uh, let, let me just uh, keep the ball rolling first. Uh, so let's start with Chitina. I guess you've prepared some uh, presentation slide over there. Probably let's have the uh, wrap up uh, in what you have actually prepared uh, to, to show the audiences. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so to wrap everything, this is my teaching journey. And uh, again, I am an English conversation teacher here in Western School, Jakarta, Indonesia. I was also an international online English tutor, a Microsoft Innovative Educator Trainer, and once a private and public teacher in the Philippines. And my EETC online class is one of my notable projects so far. So as a teacher, I conducted a teacher's training when I was in the Philippines. And I also conducted a student leadership trainings. Um, I am also together with uh, Sir Ian in Asian Mathesai League Incorporated, also a member of Mathematics Teachers Association of the Philippines, or what we call MTOP. And uh, currently, oh no, the last school year, last two school years, uh, yes, um, I met the requirements in uh, the MIE or Mar Microsoft Innovative Educator Academy, and that made me say, um, had this badge as a certified MIE. And eventually, when I trained teachers, I became the Microsoft Innovative Educator Trainer. Um, of course, these are just some of uh, the 
accomplishments I did and awards that I received when I was in the Philippines. And as what I told you, I, I launched a project that's EETC Virtual Learning where I connect teachers and students as well in the Philippines. And then these are just some of the photos. Imagine the smiles of these kids while having online tutorial or online lessons. And uh, currently I am teaching here in Western School and uh, we had lots of activities before the COVID. And um, these are just some of the platforms that I am using to reach out to my students, even just before COVID and even until now. That's uh, one, of, one of the platforms I am using actually is Instagram to reach out to my students where I post their simple success and achievements. And of course, uh, since the COVID, um, the COVID started, it was really a challenge for us. But then uh, what we did is, or what I personally did is to ask my students what will be their expectations and what are some of the things that they want to do online. So they requested about online games. That's why I have here quizzes. They also requested about tongue twister where they they must be able to, you know, read this tongue twister as fast as they can. I also had the, I also used um, platforms like Flipgrid and other activities. We also had a um, YouTube channel, Please check that out. That's EduClass in YouTube, where we post some of the lesson videos that we were conducting. And these are just some of the photos that we did during the, um, live streaming in our edu class. Okay, so this is our website. And of course, I, this one is highly recommended for you guys if you are into online teaching and if you want to collaborate with other teachers, you may have an account in Sky uh, Educate. I know what they call that. Um, Skype in the classroom, Skype in the classroom, okay. And um, of course, in school, we also have this Friday sessions where teachers are trying to collaborate and of course, um, uh, you know, gather insight, share experiences on how we can improve our teaching online. And lastly, uh, let, me leave, let me leave to you this quote to the world you may just be a teacher, but take note to your students, you are a hero. So again, let's lead our students, let's empower each other as teachers, and of course, let's commit to the calling of being a hero to our students. Thank you so much, Jay, for having me this afternoon, and God bless us all. Hello, Jay. You are on mute, Jay. Okay, so can you? Hear me? Yes, okay. yes, yes. So, yeah, nice words from teacher Tina. So, to a student, you are not just a teacher; you are a hero to them in their eyes. So, uh, keep note on that. That will keep as a very good reminder for all the teachers and educators out there. Okay, so for Peter Joyce, uh, for your uh, any final remarks of your presentation that you would like to show us? Uh, no, I don't want to repeat my PowerPoint, but I just want to wrap it. Uh, I come from Indonesia, really big countries, a contain of 17,000 islands. It have a differences in, uh, in the dress, in the characteristic of the people, in the food, in the religion, in the music, in the uh, landscape, in the profession, and everything. So uh, that's a uh, plus and minus. So uh, I want to go uh, from this. I do summit, I got a lot, and I want to use that knowledge to apply to my own country, Indonesia, to uh, use it to make it uh, national how the people from the village who don't have internet or a low bandwidth will have the same proportion with the one who live in the city uh, who have a high bandwidth things like that. Too.
So uh, I really thank uh, thank you so much for the Edu Summit. Inspired me so much, especially uh, made me think what can I do for my own country, Indonesia, because we are so large, so different, and it's not easy to generalize the one educational system for all because uh, cannot. Uh, that's the point one of the session uh, teach me to how to manage that. Uh, and then uh, I want to wrap it too for the teachers all around the world who listen to me now. Teacher, you are so great. You are so best. Uh, because we are uh, suddenly we must be everything in one day in a click in the unknown situation we must adapt very very fast and all of you guys can do it so big thumbs up for you guys and then best regard from indonesia let's fight for the best for our kids and that's from me thank you so much for having me this uh, today okay that's from me all right, thank you so much, Teacher Joyce. Uh, all the way from Indonesia, hopefully uh, more of them uh, will be able to tune in and also to, to get resources, uh, I guess, from Western School. I see that you have been putting out a lot of very uh, interesting and very uh, beneficial contents to teachers out there. So thank you for the effort as well uh, from teachers over at Western School. Uh, and of course, for all the teachers over there at Jakarta and Indonesia as well. All right, so our hearts are with, uh, with you as well, okay? So uh, I guess uh, next up, let's have uh, teacher Lucy for uh, final, final remarks as well as any of your slides that you would like to Okay, uh, final remarks. Can you, you give me two minutes? I'll just quickly go through. Okay, so this is what uh, we have uh, gone through today. So I'm uh, currently serving as an English language teacher in Kuching. Okay, uh, grateful to be the opportunity to be a influencer of our Ministry of Education Malaysia. Uh, Cambridge English uh, CFR Master Trainer and also a Distinguished Toastmaster. For guests who just tuned in, so this is where I'm located, Kuching. Okay, and I think the perks of being a teacher is that we should enjoy our journey. When I first got my posting, I really took it not as a a challenge but actually embarking on an exciting journey using the boat to the uh, rural areas and i believe four teachers we should have the core values we hold on to i hold on to these four core values to the centeredness collaboration spiritually and current constant self-development and you too should have your own principles to follow in then this is the current school i'm loving i'm loving very much uh Batalin town school and when we come across challenges, perhaps it is important for us to just change our mindset and see challenges as learning opportunities. And all of us teachers, we have something that we are good at. So I focus on our highly immersive program. You may focus on your other projects. It's good to have one core values. And I'm thankful because we had the opportunity to have a dinner with our then Minister of Education, uh, Wadi Masli Malik and opportunity to be tech talk MC is to be featured in newspapers. And this, uh, my parents, I think without them, I will not be here today. And I'm uh, holding a plaque that is a Distinguished Toastmasters Award. I received it all the way from United States of America last month to my house during COVID. If not, we will be receiving it on a red, uh, red carpet at the conference, yeah. So I encourage teachers, educators to actively sign up, join conferences, because at conferences or even summits, we can really gain a lot of things. Though the time we have to invest is very long, but I think it's worth it, we sit down, we can get a lot of gems from all the speakers. And last but not least, this is my school. And I think um, as us educators, we should serve with knowledge. Yeah, and that's all from me, Jay. Right. So thank you, Teacher Lucy. It has been uh, very inspiring as well that uh, you are currently going on, moving on to better yourself uh, with all of these different uh, initiatives, including reading books, uh, Toastmasters, uh, Education Summit, and all of these different initiatives. So thank you so much for the effort. And I'm sure that uh, all of our students are definitely very blessed to have you as a teacher in this school. 
including that uh, lucky dimple that they always get to see every day in the school classroom as well. Okay, all right, so uh, back down to teacher Ian, uh, any uh, of your final uh, presentation slides that you'd like to show us on? Okay, so uh, I would like to share these uh, thoughts. So I believe that learning is a lifelong process and it is not and must never be contained in a box. So while this pandemic may have brought education to a halt, it has brought us together in this platform to share with, learn from, and collaborate with one another. So distance will never matter as long as we have open hearts and minds to listen and to learn. We must share our best practices with one another because cooperation and collaboration will always matter. So thus, to all the educators out there, let us continue sharing and learning as well as sharing them with our colleagues and applying these lessons in our respective classroom. So our learner success will not rely solely on one person, but through everyone's collaborative efforts. So with that, I thank you Education Summit 2020 for this first education event and for giving me the opportunity to showcase our school, share my journey as an educator, as well as to impart my learnings in this meaningful event. So I wish you all the best and see you in future collaboration. Thank you. So thank you so much as well, uh, Teacher Ian, uh, for sharing all of your questions during the Higher Education Summit, as well as uh, your, your, uh, all of your sharing uh, for the past two hours from here. And also, of course, your million dollar smile that always seems to bring a smile to everyone. <laughs> okay, so uh, yeah, so wow, you know, uh, it has been, uh, we, we, actually initiated uh, this uh, reunion had to be about two hours and has been two hours and 30 minutes as of right now so uh, how's everyone doing right now okay good good yeah, yeah. okay to go on for five more hours now nah. just kidding no yeah. oh, oh. i want to have my cup of coffee oh, 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 oh. Yeah. all right so, so i guess uh let's uh call it the day uh, i guess uh, thank you so final much final remark final conclusion from everyone uh before we call it a day uh from let's start with uh, teacher tina one final final words for those of you who are out okay final words from me guys um again let me say this uh okay let's try to lead our students empower our co-teachers and of course commit to the call of being a hero to our students okay, nicely said uh from there uh, teacher joyce i go back to my western school value click caring learning caring learning integrity collaboration and kindness all right nicely put and uh, teacher lucy I will go for being joyful because when we are happy, our students will enjoy learning. That's all. Okay, happy as always. Uh, thank you so much. And teacher, yeah. Okay, so uh, as educators, we should we must be open to changes as well as we should, uh, never get tired of being innovative as well as we need to collaborate with one another because it's collaboration wherein uh, we could achieve success. So thank you. All right, so uh, I guess we come to the end of the session for today. So uh, any of you excited to find out who is the winner for today for the singing competition? Teacher <laughs> <laughs> Tina. I think you, Jay. Tina. Tina, it's Tina, Tina. So, so let, me, let me just bring it out. Um, the uh, the winner for today, uh, who do you think it is? Will it be teacher Ian, Lucy, <laughs> Joyce, or teacher Tina? <laughs> So, uh, Let's do good day I guess we have a tie between two teachers. Uh, who are the two teachers? Mm. Mm. Oh. So both of the teachers from Indonesia, mm. teacher Tina and teacher Joyce. <laughs> really? <laughs> I give it to you. You are the winner. Yes. <laughs> teacher Tina. Oh, Thank you, Tina. What is the song again? <laughs> Yeah, you can, uh, Teacher Tina's song was uh, a Filipino song, Dakila. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, Wait. oh. <laughs> my goodness, is this for real? <laughs> oh, 
Yes, we oh, promise so the students we must deliver. Met <laughs> Jay a cappella. Oh my goodness. A cappella. Okay, guys, you may think. Uh, <laughs> after this, maybe Miss Joyce can dance. Oh. <laughs> You haven't asked, but then Miss Joyce actually is a very good dancer. Ah. Okay, oh, wait. I don't know if I can share the sound to you guys. <laughs> I'll just look for the lyrics. Please hold on if you if you can still stay for a little bit longer. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, for, for those of you who are watching right now, uh, if you are coming or originating from country uh, other than Malaysia, right? Uh, so it could be uh, if you're coming from any other countries, from India, from Thailand, or whichever countries, uh, if you're interested to be uh, representing your country to actually uh, share with us education from your own, the very own countries, uh, please do uh, as well uh, share with us. Uh, I guess you can email us on this uh, uh, email address down there. Um, uh, tell us where you're from, uh, what, um, what current uh, subject you're teaching, and uh, hopefully we are able to feature you on the EduNation as well. I guess EduNation, end of the day, is to really bring in teachers from across the world, around the world, to share uh, their own insights, their own uh, yeah. perspective on education from their very own uh, nation. From all of you out there. Right. Uh, so, Teacher Tina, I think, is all ready, right? We, we can oh. all no problem that, uh, you know this song, right? okay omg my goodness this is the benefit of winning the game yes <laughs> okay so let me do this hopefully i can sing I, I i actually believe that everyone can sing but only if you can sing well so i belong to the latter so i sorry for that one okay so let me share to you my favorite christian song Okay, again, I don't know if you can hear it. Panginoon ang nais ko Kagandahan mo ay pagmasdan Ang pag-ibig mo sa aking tugon Kailan may di pa babayaan sa yon lamang matatagpuan sa yon lamang. Okay, so you can check that one. <laughs> Thank you so much. You can check the entire song in YouTube. Entitled Lee Lim, not the Kila. I'm sorry for that. Lee Lim. Wow. Thank okay. you. Yay. Right. Hey. Tina singing, please comment a five down there. So the, the, if you think she sings very well, comment a five down there. Right. So I, I guess in future we can have like a singing contest amongst teachers. Oh. On oh. <laughs> All right. Okay, so uh, I guess fun times always, uh, you know, when we're experiencing fun times, time seems to fly along very, very fast, right? Very uh, fast. By with a blink of, that, uh, of an eye. So uh, I guess it has been a wonderful session uh, together with all of you. I guess we have been a lot of, a lot of crazy chat since yesterday until today. Uh, hopefully you guys, uh, all of you here, enjoying the session as well. So uh, it's been a pleasure having you on the EduNation. Uh, hopefully we are able to see more of your works. Uh, from teacher Ian, teacher Lucy, teacher uh, Joyce, and teacher Tina as well. Uh, thank you so much for joining in. And uh, thank for those you. Watching right now as well, uh, thank you so much for tuning in uh, all the way from uh, people, from uh, teachers uh, from across the world uh, tuning in onto this show. Okay. So uh, I guess uh, with that, uh, I would like to uh, end the session for the uh, EduNation. And uh, hopefully we ha we will be uh, featuring more people from different countries as we travel across the world digitally, yes. and out and to explore all about the different worlds of education, uh, all the way from uh, Malaysia over here. All right. So with that, uh, thank you so much, everyone, for joining in uh, uh, the session today. 
I would like to reluctantly send off all of Thank you. Thank you so much, Jay. Uh, one by one. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, nice meeting you guys. All right. Okay, so there we go. Uh, the first Edu Nation. Hopefully, everyone that has been tuning in since uh, two and a half hours ago until now. Uh, hopefully that you have uh, enjoyed uh, the session for today. And hopefully all of us uh, gain a much more of a perspective into uh, how different nations and different countries uh, approach education and uh, in their very own unique way. So to me, I believe that education is very colorful, that we can learn a lot from different teachers. And uh, if educators and teachers can share with uh, all of the other teachers on all of their different education approaches, uh, we might be able to really uh, improve on the education uh, situation in all, uh, all of our nation as well. All right, so uh, I guess uh, before um, um, signing off from the Edu, uh, Edu Nation for today, uh, just a couple of announcements over here. Uh, for those of you who just joined us uh, for the past couple of days, uh, this Facebook group over here is actually uh, what we call Edu Summit, right? So the Edu Summit uh, is basically uh, a group whereby we actually share education ideas, uh, strategies, as well as um, solutions. So we actually just recently did one over here, which is actually called uh, the Education Summit 2020 Series 2. So we were actually focusing a lot about uh, education idea strategies, mental well-being education, as well as uh, special needs education as well. So definitely be sure to check out, just go to the unit session so that you can get all access to all of the speakers, all 16 of the speakers that has just presented on their various different topics as well, okay? And as well, uh, if you are new to us, uh, you can actually log in uh, to our uh, Malaysia Education Summit Facebook page where we will have all sorts of different uh, informations with regards to education. Um, so please give us a, a like if you actually love uh, what we are currently doing. Uh, hopefully we are able to reach out to more teachers out there, as well as we actually have the uh, Education Summit YouTube channel, right, uh, where we will post in uh, all the snippets about education uh, solutions as well. And of course, uh, the organizer of the program, Trophy Education, if you love gamified learning, uh, all about fun and learning and how you can make your education much more meaningful and much more engaging for your students please do check out on their website uh, and their facebook page as well right as well as our weekly session uh edu chat series where we will speak in depth with all of the different speakers uh, that are on board on the education summit as well as well as today uh, we actually have this edu nation uh, so hopefully we are able to engage much more different teachers from different countries to come aboard and share with us on their different education perspective as well Okay, so I guess with that, uh, thank you so much uh, for those joining in uh, all the way until now. Thank you so much. This is uh, Jay Wong here. Thank you so much for the word of uh, encouragement for, from all of you. And uh, hopefully we are able to see you uh, soon in our next education summit. Uh, hopefully we will have more, in, um, uh, uh, more speakers to be on board uh, and to share their wisdom and their perspective on education. So final words uh, from here. Uh, also, uh, a very good uh, Madeka celebration day. Happy Madeka day to uh, Malaysians over here. Uh, by the way, for those who are watching from overseas, uh, Malaysia is celebrating our national day tomorrow. So uh, happy Madeka day to all teachers over in Malaysia as well. So signing off uh, from Jay Wong here, Edu Nation. Hope to see you guys. And I uh, wish for a happy day for all of you uh, that is tuning in and will be tuning in later on. Take care and uh, see you soon. Thank you.